Get him on the This is South Florida's only real sports station. WQAM, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. A Beasley Broadcast Group station. And WQAM.com. World, 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 world. David's a bitch. It's Friday, you bastard. That was a classic, baby. That was just exactly what I thought it would be. And like I said, she starts out real sweet and friendly, blah, blah. And then she gives me like a grilling, like I'm on a witness stand here interrogating me. We don't have to answer to you. And we don't have to like Condoleezza or George W. Bush or Al Gore or Julie. No, but no, wait a minute. Anybody Is this else? like a post, uh, just, just a, a radio show? And I'll stop, stop that. I'm stopping it. Th this doesn't include the call? Yeah, the first one does. No, that's the third one, though. Right. The first one is the one with the call. Well, that's the one I had queued up, and you said, oh, no, the third one's a good one. See, God is punishing you for your association with this program. That's why you lost the $100 bill. That's why twice in one week the audio vault is all screwed up, and Fat Julio, the engineer, has got to come in here and bail your ass out at the last second. Here's uh, Heather from Fox News. Hi, Neil. How are you? I'm okay, I think. Good. Thanks for taking our call. We've been trying to reach you for the past couple days. You're trying to reach me? You've called people that haven't been invented yet. You've called dead relatives of mine. What's the uh, story, Heather? We're working on a story about uh, the CD you're promoting on your website. That's yeah. called Kiss, uh, I won't say it, N-word. Good morning. Hey, Heather, are you listening to the show? Uh, yes, I am. I've been listening for did, the past couple days. And just so you well, know, wait, we are Wait a minute. Pretty did, you, did you hear me go through the entire uh, rationale of what that, that... That song had nothing to do with Condoleezza Rice. Uh-huh. What about the song Condoleezza, Condoleezza? That has, that, well, that's obviously about Condoleezza. Uh-huh. Yes. And I just want to know why you're, why you're playing this on your show. No, I see. I'd like to know why. This is really interesting. Why are you calling me, asking me why I should play this? We make we have song parodies about Bill Clinton, dozens of them. Nobody ever complained about that. We have song parodies about Al Gore, dozens of them. Nobody ever complained about those. Well, about there are the... some uh, African American folks up in here in New York who are pretty offended by it. And... Well, yeah, well, wait a minute. Let me say this to you, Karen. We're not in New York. Uh huh. Okay, we don't broadcast in New York. We're on WQM in Miami. Well, and, and the fact of the matter is that unless, except for people like you and the people at uh, that right wing news. Newsmax.com will want to make a big stimulus about this. If it weren't for that, they wouldn't even be aware that we exist. Neil, okay. there's some, uh, this organization that's uh, offended by it is a national organization. The but but the, talk, fact that, the fact of the matter is we've been playing these songs for many, many, many months. We've never had one single complaint. And when interlopers like you from outside, like from Fox News or from some right-wing website, want to tell us what... I mean, for you to ask me, how come you're playing that? Because we want to play it. Okay, it's, Neil, it's, but what, what's the value comedy. in it? What it's, is it? What is it? What does it do for you? It's what is called it for audience? It's called comedy. That's what it's called. Do you have a sense of humor? Do you think it's funny to call uh, to call Condoleezza Rice? In in, 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 in addition, in addition, well, Harry Belafonte called her the House Negro. Okay, so we'll call her whatever we but, want. But this is a little bit different. I mean, he no, was, no, it's not. He the, was it's, taking it's, issue with. It's some not the policy. least bit different. She is the House Negro. See, you people at Fox may not understand this. Not everybody in the world is a right winger like Rupert Murdoch. There actually are those of us who are progressive or moderate, liberal, whatever we are, who also have the right to speak to express whatever the hell we want. So, so you, w repeat again what you just said for me there. You think she is a what? She's the House Negro. Uh-huh. And yeah. you don't find anything wrong with that? Well, what, what do you mean wrong with that? It's a fact. That's my opinion. Am I entitled to my opinion? Uh, you're, you're certainly entitled to your opinion. And that's, but, you know, and that, and that's basic, folks are wondering and that's how basically, you guys, if, That's if you basically can... what Harry Belafonte said as well. And it's obvious. Uh, this is why nobody returned your calls. Uh, Heather, or whatever your name is, because uh -huh. we knew that you were trying to stir up a bunch of crap and take something out of context. When I asked you, did, I don't think did, there's anything being taken you, out of context. Did you here. listen? Did you listen? See, we're not, you we're guys not, have been playing. We're not doing the Bill O'Reilly show, okay? It's funny. my show, and I'm not going to have you scream over me or try to out-talk me, okay? It's not going to work. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I asked you in the beginning of the conversation, which I was very calm, and I asked you, did you hear me explain the origin of that song, the restitution song? The fact of the matter is, and I don't know, I'm sure he must have been on your channel, Randall Kennedy, the black author who wrote the book Nigger, the Strange Career of a Troublesome Word. Not that I'm aware of. Well, he was certainly on CNN. He She's was on MSNBC. No Maybe he wasn't folks. on Fox because she he wasn't around. I don't know. Maybe Dr. Kennedy. weren't aware of it. From Jack Kennedy. <laughs> You know, I've got a question for are, are you. Are you aware of that book? You portray yourself to be this sort of liberal voice, but yet you're... Ma'am, I don't portray, I don't put labels on me. I'm, I'm, for example, okay, if what, you, in, what would when you call yourself to, then, politically? I call myself a human being. You see, you people on Fox, it's this old liberal and a conservative. That stuff went out with high-button shoes, okay? You know, hold on a second. I'm Here's a thinking, question. living, and breathing human being. being. In addition, Maybe I'll just in call addition it to which, why do I have to, in Miami, Florida, answer to some assholes in New York on Fox News how I do my show? What is it your business? There are a lot of people who care, and there are people in Miami they who care, care about this, too. Who, who are they? Now, you're calling. Who are they? Name me one person in Miami who's concerned about it. 
Folks we know down there, certainly. And I name, got name me one. Two. Look, name me one. It's offensive to name lie about me a woman one. Who name is me one. Of a very well, high see, I don't care. I don't care what you say. We don't. Her, we don't like Condoleezza. Okay. And have a nice day. Okay. We're calling her whatever we feel like calling her. She's a public goddamn figure. Bitch. And blow it out your right wing ass and you and Bill and by the way, O'Reilly didn't make the numbers. Zero. Zero. Anyway, it's a nine oh six at five sixty WQAM. Happy Friday to you. That's a Heather, our friend from Fox News. If we could get her called call once a week, we'd have a ninety share. Oh. Call us again next week, Heather. We'd love to hear from you. With more of your contrived horse crap. Here's this bitch calling us because she's obviously been put up to it. First, she's pretending to be a producer. And then she comes on and she's like trying to outshout and she's going to do a talk show. And she's grilling me like I'm on a goddamn witness stand. Well, how come you say this? That's my opinion. How do you like that? I don't have to justify it to you or anybody else. The people from Fox don't tell us what to say on here. And guess what, sweetheart? Neither does anybody else yet. Yet. Now, maybe after Tuesday that'll change. Although with all the Harvey Pitt business and the Haitian business, things seem to be taking a turn for the worst, as they say in the sausage factory. For the right-wingers, they seem to be taking a turn for the worst, which maybe explains why they're so panicky and hysterical. And you can read your Newsmax.com, and you can get all the lyrics you want, and get all the right-wing paranoia you want. But I, I think, like I said yesterday, this was the day that Fox News Network, for anybody who had any doubts about the fascist news network, uh, they outed themselves. They came out of the closet as your official standard bearer of right-wing repression, censorship, and paranoia. That's what they are. So thanks very much for calling, Heather, but I'm glad that we were able to do it on the air so we could show the whole world what you're really all about, you people. You people. <laughs> yeah, you, you're kind. Doing a show here in Miami, and, and, you know, if the people out there complain, I asked our, our operations manager, the program director, the janitor, I asked somebody out in the parking lot, I didn't even know who the hell it was, you hear any complaints about the restitution song, about Condoleezza? He said, no, we like that stuff. We think it's funny as crap. Why are you playing it? Because we feel like it. How about all the goddamn parodies we got on Hillary? Anybody ever complain about those? No, they love them. We ever get any complaints about the parodies we play about Mo? No, as a matter of fact, we get requests because... It's time to get it on. You bet. They love them. We don't, we're not interested in having the, and if there's some organization again that's gonna try to muscle us, that's gonna, yeah, screw them, okay? Screw them. In addition to which, uh, you know, if there were, we'd hear from them directly, not through, not through some intermediary. Maybe Fox News is the pimp network. Just like Jim Sarney is the, what's the name I got for him now? I got his column. Day. What a clown this guy is. He's the QAM spin room column every Friday in the Sun Sentinel. Thanks a lot, Jim. Even Muff was in here earlier saying, boy, that guy's like, he's like molding putty in your hands. Yeah, he said it's like playing with Play-Doh. I guess that's what Muff did on Halloween. He played with Play-Doh and Socrates. At any rate, he writes this morning about QAM signing for two more years with a Marlin. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, you know, it kills some time. That's that's what it is. It kills some time at night. Jeep. It must have got a hell of a deal. Probably they're paying us to carry it. And so Jim Sarney says, there are baseball fans in South Florida. They just don't tune into the games. The ratings went from a 3-6 last season up from a disappointing 2-5 in 2001. And then he quotes Muff Lindsay saying, baseball does well here. <laughs> And Marlins are an important part of our summer programming. In other words, we got it cheap, and it kills some time at night, and it sure gets better numbers at night than the Panthers, which there's nobody listening in the wintertime for hockey because nobody knows here from hockey. From By the way, those Leafs tied Atlanta last night. Are we depressed about that? Oh, a little girls team. And we blew the lead again and had to settle for a tie. And the people weren't too happy about it, eh? Not too happy about it, eh? B and C? How'd that pool come out yesterday, Mr. Hotshot? So thanks, Jim Sarney, for, like, sucking up. I got the hour by hours out. And you know what it averages out? What? To how many people, how many men are listening to Marlin Baseball at night? About 3,500 at any given time. 3,500 an hour. So there are baseball fans. Yeah, right. And there's a few thousand watching on TV. But you know something? It's like saying, oh, there are people who like that restaurant down the street. They just don't go there. They stand outside and they sniff, oh, the aroma's great. You know, they get it for free, but they won't go in and spend their money. It's the same thing with saying that they're baseball fans here. If they just don't go to the games, then they aren't really fans, Jim Sarney. They're not going to give it any tangible support. It can't exist there. Don't you understand that, you ugly, ugly old man? He makes me look good. He's very, you ever see his picture? No. Man, it looks like he's, it looks like, oh, he just uh, walked by uh, Moe's bag or something. Like the aroma's got that little scrunched up puss. And I've heard that there's nothing worse than a scrunched up puss, but I'll take your word for it. Now, how many votes? I guess we better do the break, because we got no spots today. Nice going with that sales department. Oh, by the way, P.D. Lenny, you're out of the closet, too. Rumor has it, what I tell you about him being two-faced and a backstabber, he's always ripping poor Screw Ann, my good, close uh, personal friend, Screw Ann, behind her back, our sales manager, the lovely Screw Ann. 
and her good friend Roy. But when it comes when they were in Vegas, guess who at the uh, dinner they took him to a nice restaurant, the wholesale department for dinner. Guess who we sat next to? Who? Screw Ann, sucked up to her, put on a good phony act. You're not fooling anybody, Petey Lenny. Okay, you're out of the closet. You're phony. You're a backstabber. But don't forget, it's time to get it on. It's 11 after 9 at 560 WQM. We'll be playing that uh, Heather piece about, what, 20 or 30 times a day? Because it's almost five, it's four and a half minutes long. Kill some good time. Plus, it's Friday. Almost 1,200 votes on the poll yesterday. See, people that don't understand this show, that want to come in, like I told her, take stuff out of context and stir up a pile of crap, and especially right-wingers that want to do that. Oh, well, you know, you're supposed to be a liberal. I'm not supposed to be anything. I'm just an asshole here getting paid to open up a mouth and give my opinions. And don't have to take orders from Rupert Murdoch or anybody in New York or D.C. or any other goddamn place yet. Hey, let me tell you about a great place, Dial a Mattress. Hey, the weekend is here. You know, you don't want to be tossing and turning all weekend long and not getting any sleep. The weekend is a time to sleep in. That's what I always say, except that damn little dog. Well, anyway, pick up the phone and call Dial a Mattress, and they'll come and take away that crappy, moldy, nasty, worn-out old mattress of yours and deliver right to your door and set up a fantastic, great new mattress, a name-brand mattress at a price that you just won't believe, unbeatable price. In fact, the whole deal is unbeatable, so like I keep telling you, it's really stupid to go to it the old-fashioned way of running around from bedding store to department store and back and forth because uh, there's no point in it. You can't get a better deal all the way than from dial a mattress They give you the choice of Serta, Sealy, Simmons, King Coil, the top names in the business, and because they've got the deepest selection of name-brand mattresses, you don't have to get worried about a bait-and-swish. Exactly the one you order is the one you get, and they deliver it to you within a couple hours after you call or any two-hour window seven days a week when it's convenient for you. You pick it, and the window, too. And they give you that 30-day in-home comfort guarantee so you can sleep on it, uh, rock and roll on it, whatever you like, for up to 30 days to make sure it's right for you and your back. So if you want to get a great night's sleep tonight and for years to come, call Dial a Mattress right now like I always do, like the lovely Miguel does. And he is still screwing his brains out on it. Call 1-800-MATTRESS, 1-800-M-A-T-T-R-E-S, or check them out on their famous worldwide website at mattress.com. Live and local, this, this is 560. The radio is all yours now. QAM. There's a but I smell it. Could the studios of Channel 10 be haunted? Dwight Fort Lauderdale, Channel 10. I witness you. What? I witness you. Join us tonight for a special report on the haunting of Channel 10. Your country boy sandwiches are good. They're good. May the good jewels be yours. Who ate my cookies? And you shall be in all your days of good news. And stay one country boy. Who ain't my cookies? Wait, 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 wait. The river is from my hair. Why with his news? Shake it loose. Chubby boo. Chubby boo. Turn to dust in his shoes. A very, very fine dust indeed. I witness Dwight turn to dust in his shoes. I witness you. Hi, 16 at 560 WQ. I'm happy Friday to you. Mad Dog at 1. You got Hank at 3. And then you got after that. Good luck to you. What do we got? Oh, Dave wants that show at 5. Hooters College Football Preview with Clarence, Joe Z, and Donnie B. Jr. 7 o'clock tonight, followed by Eddie K of GA and uh, ESPN Radio Overnight, because the overnight guys are on vacation. But a short vacation, I notice. Just like a long weekend. That's good. We can't afford to have them out of here too long, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Being deep crap. 1,182 votes on the poll yesterday. Which of these words do you think is the most offensive? Should have asked Heather about that while we had her on the phone yesterday from uh, Fascist News Network. Should have asked the lovely Heather, bitch. Which of these is the most offensive? None of the above. They're just words. 751. 63.5% have learned that they're just words. And let me say it again. I find it just amazing that we never had one call about the parodies on Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, Al Gore, Ted Kennedy. It only matters when you insult somebody they like. Some, some right-wing asshole like uh, Condoleezza and all this uh, bunch of uh, merry Nazis. None of the above. 751. Nigger 299. 299 nigger votes, kike 55, faggot 45, and then it was way down to WAP 18, and spick in last place 14. Incredible. Only 14. They're used to that. I got them conditioned to it. And you see how well that works? I bet you if I would have done that poll five years ago, spick would have been way up there, because we have all these Julios out there listening, even though they're in the closet. They're in the closet with their little transistor radios. Do they still make transistor radios? No. Huh? I don't know. 
I guess you can get a big, you get a real good one for a hundred bucks. That same hundred dollar bill that you lost. See, I've told a story before about this friend of mine in Detroit, and one of his friends was going off on his motorcycle for the weekend, and I don't know where he the won something. I don't know at the track or won a lot of money. So he had a thousand dollars in hundred dollar bills. He had ten one hundred dollar bills. And he said to my friend, he said, I don't want to carry around all that money all weekend because I'm just going where the hell he was going. Uh, so I'm just going to take 200. I'm going to give you the 800, the other 800 to hang on to for me. This is a true story. He gave him eight $100 bills. So my friend and I, we go to lunch in Detroit at some uh, sloppy uh, diner, wherever the hell it was. We go to lunch. And by the time we got back to the office, which at that time I had my uh, boiler room ad agency, radio ad agency business, and he was in, I don't know what business he was in, but in the same building. Get back to the office, and he starts fumbling through his pocket. He's, oh, my God. In the restaurant, he dropped on the floor three of the eight $100 bills. So now he's down to 500 Okay? True story. So he's in a panic. Go back into the restaurant, and naturally somebody had picked it up. I mean, there's not a Chinaman's chance he's getting that money back. So in just a matter of an hour, he's already parlayed this poor guy, his 800 bucks into 500 so what's the solution? We got to go to the track, win it back. <laughs> yeah. So that night we go to Northville Downs outside of Detroit. Go to Northville, and you know, in those days I used to really win a lot of money at the track. That's a true story, boys and girls. Not anymore, but in those days I used to gamble pretty good. And uh, I don't know, maybe it was luck, I guess. But not that night. <laughs> no, not that <laughs> night. So we go to the track. I couldn't pick my nose. Okay, I couldn't catch a cold. And uh, every bad break, everything is going wrong, and he, make a long story short, out of the 500 he had left, he loses $450 of that. Now, I wasn't there whenever this other guy came back on his motorcycle to find out that his $800 had been parlayed into 50 bucks. You know what I'm saying? Loan me $50. Yeah, I think that's the 50 he loaned to Larry, too. Is that a true story? Did he kill him? I, I don't know. I, I, I'm sure, I wish I would have been there. I'd like to have been a fly on the wall. So that if I had the wings, I could have gotten away from there real quick. But, oh, man. I feel a little better about my $100 yeah. bill. $800, uh, $1, uh, eight, eight, $100 bills, and he comes back and he has 50 bucks. How do you like to try to splain your way out of that one, huh? Thank New England God, Paul, never see me again. Are you stepping on me again? New England Paul, who's getting really chronic on a fax machine, says, listen to the show yesterday. It could have been your best show ever. I don't think so. Don't get too carried away. It was a great call. But I wouldn't say it was the best show ever. Maybe this week. Love it when you're pissed off and fired up. Well, God damn it, that's good, Paul. Keep up the good work and keep playing all your bits. Tell that bitch to kiss your big fat ass. Well, hey, guess what, Heather? Kiss my big fat Rectum. ass. My big pimply old wrinkly ass. And just when you got your lips on it, I'll give you a little extra gift in there, too. Uh, did I give the poll results? Yes, I did. Thank goodness, because, boy, he didn't waste any time. Even though he did not respond to my question that I asked him. See, one thing about Boca Brian and about Eric up there, uh, at the, wherever he is. They got their, like I said yesterday, they got their own little uh, business going with our website. I mean, I, I'm, excuse me to ask any questions so I could say on the air here's something intelligent and tell the poor suckers out there what's going to happen with the uh, orders and whether the uh, MoBit CD is going to go out. I, I don't know. So I asked him a little question on the poll this morning. That I faxed to Eric. Do I get an answer? No. Do I have any idea what's going on with that? No. No. Did Brian tell you anything at Treasure Island last night before you lost your hundred dollars? No. No. See, I don't want to start playing Butch Boss, but I guess I'm going to have to. It'd be nice if you people would communicate, just like all that other contretemps that started uh, days and days before I found out about it with the website and with that old other CD and with the restitution song. Oh, when all the crap hit the fan. Don't talk to me about it. I mean, why the hell would anybody want to tell the old fag about it? He might say something on the air, and the audience might discover what's really going on. See, I'd like to be able, well, just once in my life, to come on here and say, hey, folks, here's what's going on, so the audience can discover what it is instead of this, like, back door. Who is that? Eric. Well, yeah, what does he have to say? Sending you a fax. Oh, he's sending me a fax. Great. Here's today's poll. I thought of this coming to work this morning. I don't know what prompted me. It just what event of the last 25 years has been the greatest? Had, let me try it again. Which event of the last 25 years has had the greatest negative impact on South Florida? The Marielle boat lift, the 2000 hanging chat election, Hurricane Andrew, or Alien? Now I must be leaving something out. It seems to me there's been so many other bad things that have happened here, but they must have skipped my mind. Liberty City riots. I guess I should put that on there too. Liberty City riots, Eric. Liberty City Riots. Remember that? Oh, you weren't here. No. You were on a banana boat somewhere. You were you were hanging out there with Alien down there in the Caribbean. 
Liberty City Rides. I guess, and if there's anything that I'm missing there, I'm sure somebody will call in or fax in or whatever. I think that's an excellent question, if you ask me. I'll tell you who's really I'm um, starting to like a lot. Jack Cafferty on CNN, that goofball they have in the morning with Paula. See, they're starting to change the whole approach now because they're getting butchered by that fascist news network, our good friends at Fox with those silly assholes that sit around and yuck it up in the morning. So now they're sitting around and yucking it up, too. They sit on that sofa. But he was talking about our good, close, personal friend, the chairman of the day, very briefly, I'm sure. He'll be gone before he can say uh, asshole. Harvey Pitt, who is the Pitts. What the hell did I do with that story? Oh, here it is. Paul Krugman writes in the New York Times today, the Pitt principal. And the latest scandal with Harvey Pitt yesterday. And so they asked the viewers to email them which they have a different topic that they ask about every day. There wasn't one person who emailed them out of the hundreds or whatever they got, thousands maybe, supporting Harvey Pitt. Not one. He must go, okay? It's like the Fox watching the chicken coop, the Fox network watching the chicken coop. That's what it's like. So there's our poll question. Let's see. Miami boat, the mayor boat left, uh, hang a chair. And we got to put the Liberty City riots on there, too. would be a good one. How about the influx of Haitians? No, that's not good. What are you laughing about? That hasn't been a picnic, with all due respect to our good, close, personal Haitian friends, which I'm sure we must have one or two, don't we? No. Sure we do. The Pitt principal writes Paul Krugman. He says, so Harvey Pitt decided not to tell other members of the Securities and Exchange Commission a small detail about the man he had chosen to head a crucial new accounting oversight board after turning his back on a far more qualified candidate. William Webster reports Stephen Labaton of the Times headed the audit committee at U.S. Technologies. Now that company is being sued by investors who claim that management defrauded them of millions. And what did Mr. Webster's committee do after an outside auditor raised questions about the company's financial controls? That's right, it fired the auditor. Mr. Pitt's response when this story broke beats anything a satirist could have imagined. Pitt speaks, seeks probe of himself, read one headline. Honest. Mr. Pitt's own agency will investigate how he chose Mr. Webster. Meanwhile, what was Mr. Webster thinking? Nobody thinks he's corrupt, but having failed so spectacularly to police executives at a single small company, how could he imagine himself qualified to enforce honest accounting for all of corporate America? Yet it's no accident that Mr. Pitt picked the wrong man. Mr. Webster was chosen over better candidates precisely because accounting industry lobbyists, a group that still clearly includes Mr. Pitt, believed he'd be ineffectual. Let's call it the Pitt Principle. The famous Peter principle said that managers fail because they rise to the level of their incompetence. The Pitt principle tells us that sometimes incompetence is exactly what the people in charge want. In this particular case, ordinary investors demanded a crackdown on corporate malfeasance, and Mr. Pitt pretended to comply. But this administration is one by and for people who have profited handsomely from their insider connections. Remember Harkin and Halliburton? And why won't the administration come clean about that energy task force? So he picked someone with an impressive but irrelevant background whom he could count on not to get the job done. This principle explains a lot. For example, the Treasury Secretary's job is to pursue sound fiscal and economic policies, so if you don't want that job done, you appoint a prominent manufacturing executive with little understanding either of federal budgets or of macroeconomics. He'll be just the man to preside over a lightning-fast transition from record budget surpluses to huge deficits. He'll even cheerily declare that the latest indicators look good just days before consumer confidence plunges to a nine-year low. The Attorney General's job is to uphold the Constitution and enforce the rule of law, so if you don't want that job done, you pick a former senator who doesn't have much respect either for the law or for the Constitution, especially silly stuff about due process, separation of church and state, and all that. He'll be just a man to respond to a national crisis by imprisoning more than a thousand people without charges, while catching not a single person who's committed an act of terrorism, not even the anthrax mailer. Talking about John Ascroft now. The same principle can be applied at lower levels. Intelligence and defense experts who realistically assess threats to national security and the consequences of U.S. military action. So if you don't want that job done, you place it in the hands of prominent neoconservative intellectuals with no real-world experience. They can be counted on to perceive terrorist links where the CIA says they don't exist and to offer blithe assurances about fighting a war in a densely populated urban area when the military itself is very nervous about doing it. But the most important application of the Pitt principle comes at the top. The president's job is to unify the nation and lead it through difficult times. If you don't want that job done, you appoint an affable fellow from a famous family who's led a charmed business and political life thanks to his insider advantage. He'll be the kind of guy who sees nothing wrong in seeking partisan advantage from a national crisis, even going so far as to declare that members of the other party don't care about the nation's security. That way, a great surge of national unity and good feeling can be converted in little more than a year into a growing sense of dismay, with more and more Americans saying that the country is going in the wrong direction writes Paul Krugman in today's New York Times. And you are... Absolutely correct, sir. Right on it, Paul. 927 at 560. WQ, should I vote? I guess I'll vote during the break. I'm not really sure what my answer is going to be on that poll today. That's the kind I like, the kind of poll where you have to go like, like, I don't know, kind of think about it for like two or three seconds. 
I'll tell you one thing you shouldn't be thinking for like even one second about where you're going to buy you a great new car. Tom Lavin down there at the Hallett Pontiac GMC is the kind of guy you want to do business with. No BS, no games. He pulls uh, all the punches out, you know what I'm saying, in the uh, card. Tom loves the Neil Rogers listeners, too, which is why he's created the Neil deal at Hallett. You know, I love when Bob Eisenberg comes in here and gives me an old, tired piece of coffee and just changes the date on the top of it. You see that? I write, well, you're not fooling us at all here, uh, Bob, okay? And it's a good thing that Tom is an easygoing guy, or he'd uh, give this account to the real sales guy. Save big dollars on all Pontiacs and, G's and GMCs in stock during the Neil deal that's going on again. Just mention you heard about it here on the show. Mention Bob Eisenberg's name. And after they pick themselves up the floor from laughing their ass off, they'll give you a hell of a deal. Stop by Hallett Pontiac GMC at 13401 South Dixie Highway. That's U.S. 1 across from the falls where every vehicle is marked with what's supposed to be lowest price. Mention the Neil Rogers deal and save even more. Check out the complete line of GMC SUVs, including the Envoy and the all-new Vibe SUV that's got the power of a big, gutsy, gas-guzzling sports car. Hallett's also got a tremendous selection of pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. And like I tell you, every single day of my life on this show, if anybody else, if everybody else turned you down because you got crappy credit, because you look like a deadbeat, have no problem because Tom's got a great sense of humor. He'll cut your deal. In fact, even Carlos could probably buy a car there, but I think that might be going a little bit too far. Get a Neil Rogers deal at Hallett Pontiac GMC across from the Falls on Dixie Highway. Open every day, seven days a week. Hallett Pontiac GMC, who be professional grade. <laughs> Sports Radio 560 QAM. Bad day to quit sniffing glutes. Welcome back to the highly rated of Mo Howard and David of the show. Quoting for my extravagation. Okay, stupid, where were we? We were doing this. No, oh, wrong. Oh. You were doing that to me. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Mo. But that's better. Mm. Oh, wrong day. Oh, Chris. Nick, I didn't say you could say that yet. Okay. Grande. Now you. Chris Carter. Grande Gatsby. That's Gatsby. Not on my watch, you punk. Okay. Grande. He's up, will you? Ow. What's with the kung fu grip? Sorry, Mo. And we got one of our three very important callers on the line here. WQAM, what do you want? Come on, come on, spit it out. I can't understand the goddamn thing you're saying. What are you doing? I'm playing with my Mary Coker bobblehead doll. Oh, that's quite understandable. Why, I sometimes... Help me out. Help me out. Go ahead, Guilty. You got me going. Almost there. Say go on there. Look at that. I got it all over my wig. I'm getting pounded. 9.33. Now, are they starting again? Do you hear them sawing down there on the second floor again? Yeah, I'm starting to hear it. And they're not just sawing. It feels like they're, like, pushing all the floorboards up. I think the whole goddamn floor is going to come up uh, just off to my right, under the refrigerator and the microwave over there. Any second. And it always sounds worse in that studio. It sounds like it's, like, right under Clarence's ass in the other room there. Rectum. In the uh, old PD's office. Following is a message from uh, Michael Moore's website. Also want to let you know he'll be on... Oh, no. Well, you know, everybody uh, can't be choosy, I guess. He's got that the movie out. You know who he's going to be on? Oprah. Yeah. For the whole hour today, talking about Bowling for Columbine. Uh, I don't see any facts from Boca Brian or from uh, Eric, so I still have it. I just mentioned that in passing. Here's a fact from Paul in Greenville, South Carolina. It says, love your show. Can't wait to hear, wait to hear that Fox call again. Oh, you will. P.S. I dated a girl named Heather at Fredonia State. She was a terrible lay. That could have been the one, Paul. Sounds like her. Sounds highly frustrated. Highly anal. Do you see this story in the Herald today? Rilla held in dog cage, police are told. Little Rilla Wilson who disappeared, you know? No, Since I don't know. Since the ECF has done such a great job under our Governor Jeb Bush. I want to tell you something, too, because it's very obvious how desperate these people are getting right now, running around trying to whip off all the dark folks out there. And, oh, uh, that liberal voice down there, oh, he's a uh, racist. He hates you, dark folks. And this one and that one, and uh, don't vote for those liberals. Right. I think black people are going to turn out in record numbers on Tuesday because they're predicting a light turnout across the country. You dark folks for once in your lives might actually, uh, if they let you vote, which I doubt, but if they do, 
uh, you might actually uh, tip the uh, outcome of the election. And all you Haitian people in Dade County, if you don't go out there and vote for Bill McBride two or three times each on Tuesday, there's something really wrong there. Because this guy's talking out of both sides of his ass, this governor of yours, okay? Oh, well, I think the rule ought to be changed. Of course, his brother is the one who mysteriously and still won't, they still won't tell us what it's all about. How long is that sign going to go on right under goddamn, uh, is uh, Clarence doing that in there or what? Either that or maybe Clarence and Moore are in there having like a little, uh, somebody's getting raped at it again. Huh? It sounds like sawing, but you know that uh, sawing sound, don't you? That familiar sawing sound? In fact, let me see if it, oh, it's still in there, that big black uh, number. Yeah, it's still in here. I thought maybe somebody stole that and was using it on Mo after the show. Could be. I think he'd like it. Anyway, poor little Rilia. This is disgusting. Right on the front page of the Herald. State and local investigators are trying to corroborate witnesses' accounts that the two caregivers are missing. Two caregivers, you know, with a, uh, quotation marks you have to make with their hands. Of missing child, a foster child, Rilia Wilson sometimes kept her locked inside a dog cage, according to two law enforcement sources familiar with the case. Investigators say they obtained a dog cage large enough to hold a small child during a search of the home of Geraldine and Pamela Graham. Detectives hope to prove the women used it to confine Rilia, has been missing since January 2001. Lawyers for both women strongly denied the allegations last night, characterizing them as scare tactics by police. The girl, born to a crack-addicted mother, had behavioral problems, according to the Grahams. Geraldine Graham complained to close friends and has said in interviews that the child would defecate all over the house. Well, you know, that's like tiny, okay? Now, back when I first got the dogs, you had to put them in those little training cages to housebreak them. Right. But the dog is 14 years old now, and, of course, she was 5 years old when she disappeared. I don't think that you put, like, 5-year-olds in uh, cages to housebreak them, to train them, to potty train them. But nevertheless, that's what goes on here in the state of Florida. Forced sterilization, baby, it's the only answer. And if that pisses off Heather or the people at Fox News or you want to make it into a racist comment, go right ahead. Twist and turn and manipulate for your own fun and advantage. Just keep, keep taking people's words out of context and twist whatever you want. Forced sterilization. Not, we're not talking about for any one group. We're talking about people who shouldn't be allowed to reproduce. And believe me, there's more than uh, uh, just dark folks in that category. Seriously, if he don't stop that the song down there. Oprah. And, and this is, you know, usually the banging, at least it sounds like it's fairly distant a little bit, the drilling and the banging. But the sawing, he's got to be raping Moe in there. He's got to be. Clarence has got to be humping him. Got to be. What else could that be? It's right up against the wall there. Can you hear it? Yeah, I can hear it here. Man! 83 votes on the poll already. What event in the last 25 years has had the greatest negative impact on South Florida? Marielle Boatlift, that was my vote. Trust me when I tell you. Oh, I still don't see any facts, by the way, from... Oh, here it is. Here it is. About time, fatso. Let's see what he says before I do the uh, poll result. It says we're going to be selling the revised Mo CD starting Monday. Between now and then, I have to do the new cover art, provide a way for people to confirm or cancel. Regards, Eric. Well, best regards, Eric. See, at least I got a response out of him. It would be nice if you let me know this, because those people who ordered the other CD are listening probably now. Maybe some of them are getting ready to turn it off, like Rick the Mailman. What is that pounding on a goddamn wall again? What are they doing in there? They're no drilling, idea. they're pounding, they're sawing, they're sucking, and something else that I think rhymes with the last one. Man. So thanks for responding, Eric. Here's our poll result right up to the moment. 88 votes. Remember 88, Radio 88, WCBS in New York? Of course you don't. You ain't never been in New York. You would know WCBS from, uh, from anything. Mary L. Boatliff, 43. Which event in the last 25 years has created the greatest negative impact in South Florida? 2000 Hanging Chat Election, 33. Hurricane Andrew, 5. Elyon, only 4. You're small potatoes, Elyon. Out of sight, out of mind. And Liberty City Riots, only 3. How soon we forget. 21 till 10 at 560 WQM. We're going to take a ton of calls here today, man. We're going to take 4,000 calls between now and 1 o'clock, or I'm going to stay over extra. We'll push that mad dog right off the edge of the uh, map. That's, we'll push the whole schedule back, you know, like on the ass, ass end there. Who needs ESPN radio? Who needs that crap? By the way, thanks again for the puff piece, Jim Sarney, from all of us here at QAM. Thanks for all the sucking. In fact, Muff said he's exhausted from it. Here's a place that you'll love. Delights of West Boca, you low carbohydrate, uh, what is it? Carbohydrate and sugar-free Atkins Diet Superstore. they got a great new selection of low-carb cookies. Oh, man, they're unbelievable. Fourteen different cookies. And uh, they're delicious, from three different bakers, no less. they got peanut butter, chocolate chocolate chip, lemon. Eh, lemon cookies to me are kind of like bland, you know. And the coconut, all sugar-free, low-carb. And there's plenty of bland people out there, so try the lemon cookies. Stop by Delights and sample these or any of the other great products before you buy them if you want. Delights uh, gave us a loaf of their new carb, uh, low-carb bread called uh, Sinfully Low-Carb Bread. 
Petey Lenny, I think, put it under his armpit and took it home for his girlfriend. Spread some of the uh, new La Nuba jam on it, and you got a great low-carb breakfast. You'll be jamming it. And don't forget, as your official Atkins Retail Center, Delights of West Boca sells every Atkins Diet brand product at 25% off today, tomorrow, a week from Sukkis, and every day. And, of course, everybody knows Atkins, for a lot of people out there, works very effectively. So check out Delights of West Boca. They've got a friendly, knowledgeable staff to lead you down the path to good health and help you lose that disgusting fat. It's grotesque. It looks bad. It's killing you, believe me, from somebody who knows. They're open right there on the corner of Glades and 441 every day, seven days a week from 10 till 10. You can call them toll-free at 1-877-LOW-CARB, and you can even check them out on the web at lowcarb.com. Delights of West Boca, your official Atkins Retail Superstore. Friday, you bastard. Oh. Forty-four at five sixty WQM. Yeah, that skank was on uh, Fox News last night. I was channel surfing, and there was Hannity and uh, Sherlock Holmes. Well, what a! I mean, the shows on that uh, channel are just amazing. But they got those big numbers, sure, because the right wingers found that they got their own network, and a lot of other naive people are too stupid to understand where they're coming from. So they got number on there. We'll see how long that lasts. But at any rate, so uh, the skank was on there last night, pontificating the same tired crap, but beep, beep, and get all indignant and bent out of shape. Old news, okay? You guys ought to realize she's old news, washed up, dead meat. Yesterday's news, get rid of her. Atheist Eagle Scout faces expulsion. Thank God that the Eagles and the Boy Scouts are such great, upstanding <laughs> organizations. Eagle Scout Daryl Lambert has earned 37 merit badges, worked more than 1,000 hours of community service, and helps lead a Boy Scout troop in his hometown. But the 19-year-old has another distinction that may lead to his removal from the Boy Scouts. He's an atheist. Oy. How do you like that? Oh, my God. Right. Lambert was given roughly a week by the Boy Scouts regional executive to declare belief in a supreme being and comply with Boy Scouts policy or quit the Scouts. The official and Lambert were to talk again this week regarding Lambert's answer, although a definite date hasn't been set yet. We've asked him to search his heart to confer with family members to give this great thought. Brad Farmer, the Scout executive of Chief Seattle Council of the Boy Scouts, told his son of Bremerton, if he says he's an avowed atheist, he does not meet the standards of membership. No fags, no atheists. I guess that leaves me out. On membership applications, Boy Scouts and adult leaders must say they recognize some higher power, not necessarily religious. Mother Nature would be acceptable, Farmer said, or Mother something. As a private organization, the Boy Scouts are permitted to exclude certain people from membership. The organization bans gays and atheists, gays and atheists, and especially atheist gays. Lambert has been a scout since he was nine, said he wouldn't profess a belief and doesn't feel it, uh, saying it amounts to a lie. I wouldn't be a good scout then, would I? Oh, come on, lie a little. The issue arose about three weeks ago when Lambert got into an argument with a scout leader at a Boy Scout leadership training seminar over whether atheists should be expelled from the organization. Farmer's office soon contacted him to talk about his non-belief. You ready for this, to talk about his non-belief? In other words, you're going to believe, God damn it. Oh, excuse us. Lambert disclosed his atheism to scout leaders overseeing his Eagle Scout application last year, but still received the award. The issue was surfaced before 
In 1998, 16-year-old twins Michael and William Randall, who refused to take an oath to God, were awarded Eagle badges after a 7-year-old legal fight with Orange County, California uh, City Council. You can't be a good person unless you believe in God. How do you like that? But you, well, it may make any difference whether you're good or bad, but you can't be a scout unless you believe in God and you're a heterosexual and screwing some bitch or whatever the hell you're doing. That's it. You better get with it, mister. No more of this atheist crap. They've given him a week to declare belief in the Supreme Being. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, and the good news is, because Mo has done such a great job on those Dolphin games, because it's going to be a tough game in Green Bay Monday night, for a little pep talk, they're going to invite him in the locker room before the game. You know, like Newt Rockney, you know, he's going to, they're all going to huddle around Mo, and he's, you know what he's going to do? Who's going to give Ricky a blow? Yeah. 139 votes on the poll. What event of the last 25 years has had the greatest negative impact on South Florida? 70 of us say Mariel Boatler, 50.3%. The 2000 hanging chat election, 48, 34.5%. See, I'm thinking about as far as greatest negative impact as opposed to, like, embarrassment. See what I'm saying? Now, the poll asks greatest negative impact, so I think so far we're right. As far as the embarrassment, the hanging chad could have been the winner. Hurricane, and it might still be. Hurricane Andrew, 12. Alien, only 6. Poor little Alien, man. That was pretty embarrassing for us. Small potatoes. And Liberty City Riots 3. Well, again, the question, though, isn't embarrassing. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon Wireless line. Here's Miami. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. You left Jeb Bush off that poll. I can't believe it. That would win hands down if you put him on uh -huh. there. I would put him on there right away. Jeb Bush isn't an event. Well, he's a pretty big event. His defeat so, on Tuesday. Negative, right? negative event. Yeah. Okay, vote early and vote often on Tuesday. Okay, great. Excellent call. There you go. we got one other call on the board. Here we go with these calls again. Oh, no. After the highlight yesterday, after such a grandiose moment on this show. And now we're right back to this again. And we had listened to that. Was that, was that a call? No. Did that man have anything to say? No. Nothing. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. Here's our last call from Margate. I can't believe we're back to this again. Hello. Margate. Is gone. That's our last call. And there's nobody on it. Great. You know what I'm, I think I'm going to say, and then just go home. Bye, bye, bye. See ya. Oh, we want the calls back. That's the meat and potatoes. That's the bread and butter of the show. Is the calls and get whipped up to a frenzy about. Okay. So here we go. We're on a roll. The show has been taken off like a goddamn spaceship. Everything is rocking and rolling. We had that great call, which I played again, and these people, duh, like that. Same old tired crap, man. And Tom Jicka tells me i got to come back here to take the pulse. There isn't any goddamn pulse. you got to be kidding me, Tommy. And by the way, go to Charles Alfieri. People are laughing their ass off at you. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T line. Let's get it going here, baby. Let's get going. Get off your dead ass. Oh, there's going to be a big voter turnout here on Tuesday. Not. They're already making excuses. Oh, the lines are going to be too long and these newfangled machines and the ballot is so long. Yeah, okay. Whatever you say. Palm Beach, hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Love the show. Uh -huh. Hey, Ann Coulter has two distinctly different sized breasts. Really? She does, a, she does a good job of covering up with her long hair. I didn't see that she had any of them last night on Fox. Well, Maybe she, like, shaved them off or something. She didn't have any of them. She had a normal one, and one's pretty much gone. Hmm. Maybe she so. loaned it to Mariah. Great day. Okay, see ya. Another good one. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T line. QAM, hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. You still choking that chicken? Yeah, choke this. <laughs> WQAM. QAM. QAM. Okay. It's going to be a hysterical Friday. I can see it already. Get in the mood for it. QAM. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. You're the man. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and. Like I said, this bull crap about, well, the callers are this and they're uh, the big part of the show. You have got nothing to say. You had nothing to say before I went away for the, like in March. And I come back here after a seven or eight month hiatus, and he's still got nothing to say about anything. People like him. Is, is he funny? Yeah, is he no, interesting? Is no, he amusing? No. Nothing. Nothing. Have something to say, goddammit. You got a goddamn election coming up on Tuesday. You got uh, all kinds of crap going on here with, uh, they don't care about any of it. About anything. Serious, amusing, in between. How about we ask, what do you get for Halloween? What was in your sack? That's a good question. What was in your sack? What's that? Something to hold for Miguel. Uh... Something to hold for Miguel? Yeah. Tickets to a, a race that we're not supposed to mention. 
Oh, the one, the uh, Budweiser race that we can't mention because it's like uh, we got some other Crown Royal or something sponsoring it. Okay, we won't mention Budweiser. Well, what, what do you mean tickets to hold for Miguel? I don't understand that. Is Miguel like in the building? Is he? Are you like his pimp now or what? Uh, and I by the way, so. Miguel isn't allowed to go to Treasure Island anymore because his girlfriend's getting really psychotic about it. That's a true story. Was he there last night? No, he and wasn't. he won't be there anymore either. Great. One thing when he goes out to the places to suck up the free booze, but when he might be, uh, you know, looking on something else at Treasure Island, the answer is no way, Jose and Miguel either. Well, they got that new mattress to break in. WQAM. QAM. Here's uh, line two. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Neil, uh, happy birthday. Tuesday. Wait till Tuesday. Uh, my son, uh, Monday. Yeah, wait, well, wait, wait till Monday. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T. And this, this really is, it's the end. I came in here on such a high, like floating on cloud nine. Everybody in this town was talking about that Fox bitch yesterday, about that verbal exchange we had on this radio show. It was the talk of the town. Of course, nothing in the newspaper, because nobody here writes anything about radio, and God forbid they should give us too much publicity, except Jim Sarney writing about how everybody loves baseball, which they don't. Quoting the bogus numbers from Muff. Muff. Muff could have told him he had a 22 share. He would, he would have written it. He doesn't have any idea. Come on, Muff. Next time, tell him baseball had a 30 share. You'll see it in the paper. Delray Beach. Hello. Delray Beach. Hello, Muff. Neil. Sounds like you, yes. How are you? Good. Um, that was an unbelievable call yesterday. Yeah. I think she would have uh, called you a damn faggot if you would have let her on another five minutes. Uh-huh. That's how... Uh, those right wing people think. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! This is good. Diana uh, Butler theft case thrown out. I'll better intersperse some of these uh, bedtime stories because otherwise I'm uh, to put too much pressure on these bastards, you know? Let's see, we started with the calls again last uh, Thursday, I think. And today's like, oh, that's eight days? No, too much. Too much pressure for these bastards. They can't handle it. They ran out of material after the first half hour. Diana Butler theft case thrown out. The case against former royal butler Paul Burrell has been dramatically thrown out of court in London after he was cleared of stealing from the estate of late Princess Diana. The case has cost two and a half million dollars U.S. Burrell hugged his barrister, Lord Carl Carlisle G is Q C, and sobbed uncontrollably when he realized the trial at Old Bailey in London was being aborted today. Burrell phoned his wife Maria from the courtroom to tell her the news. He said, "Send a letter to Maria." Burrell, 44, has denied charges of stealing more than 300 of the princess's personal items after her death in a 97 Paris car crash. Royal expert Robert Johnson told CNN, Johnson, whatever his name is, the trial was halted when prosecution barrister William Boyce told the judge, Mrs. Ra Justice Rafferty, that Burrell had informed Queen Elizabeth in a private conversation following Diana's death that he had kept some of the princess's possessions for safekeeping. So the queen knew about it, but she just sat back and let the trial go ahead. And she said, uh, I think it's a bad idea. Might kind of look good. Frickin' queen. Nothing worse than a frickin' queen. WQAM. Hey, Neil, how are you this morning? Okay. Uh, question for you um, from your poll. I think you're leaving off a very important event that happened probably, I guess, about three years ago, and yeah. that's, that's Danny and Jimmy. Okay, good. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and the Verizon wireless line. Here's Miami. Hello. WQAM, you're on the air in Miami. Hello. Uh, Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm a Julio, and I would just like, I know that you like to get your facts straight. I just want to say something. When you mentioned Cole Butch up there in, uh, Washington. I, I mentioned, I mentioned who? Uh, just, uh, when you call Butch, when you said to call Butch, Butch? in, in regard to the, uh, to the immigrant laws, when you said the Haitians should vote twice, uh, because of, uh, uh, his brother in uh, in Washington uh, lost. A because while, his brother in Washington lost. Correct. Sir, what uh, language are you speaking? Uh, I'm uh, speaking the Julio language. Uh, it sounds like it. Yeah. Good okay. job, by the way. Well, can I can I finish what I was? I'm listening. Go ahead. All right. Well, you mentioned that uh, to to change the laws in Washington. Remember that who changed the laws was your boy Clinton. During his watch, he changed the laws. And, and allow when people land 
touch a land, they're allowed to stay. No, 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 only, no, no, only, cu only Cubans. That's the Cuban Adjustment Act of 94. That exactly. has to do only with Cubans. It's the, it's That's only... the wet foot, dry foot. That has okay, well, nothing that to do with Haitians. To, that happens to the people in China also when they're, they're allowed to come in here. You want to know why? Communist to communist. The Haiti's not right, a communist country. what happens country. in Cuba is the same yeah. thing. Yeah, that's what I just said. So why, what is, why, what is why, that? What, is why, that? Why, what does why, that have to do with Haiti? I know you don't want to be confused no, with the facts, sir. I, I would like what does that to have say, to do with it? No, what does that no. have, sir? I let you speak. Do you want to listen, right. or do you want me to hang okay, up? Okay, because I'll be you. glad to hang up. Go ahead. What does that have to do with the Bush policy that they very quietly last December slipped through, not telling anybody about it, and they still don't want to document it, that says that Haitians are not going to be released in the community after they get here to be to be given their political asylum, but they're to be kept in indefinite in te uh, detention unlike any other refugees or immigrants? But that had never been the law. The, the, the Haitians have always been turned back unless they have been... Some issue Sir, you aren't listening to what I just said. They weren't turned back. They were allowed to come up on shore. Under the watch, by the way, the Coast Guard and your administration, your Homeland Security folks, under the watch of this administration and Homeland Security, which is making people all around the country like, <laughs> run to the bull, baby, run to the bull if you think that we're safe, okay? Live, Live and local. We are Sports Radio 560 QAM. Fudge packing? All right. Oh, my God. Condoleezza, Condoleezza, Chevron Moody. Jesus Christ. With your funky yellow teeth so far apart. Condoleezza, Condoleezza, what you be doing? Get the old fascist like that token Schwarzer's dog. Is you dead? Cause you a high-toned boot-lip Negro Yes Is you the black day and your mammy Who be smart Does they like How you shine their shoes Condoleezza All the way you wash and park the whitest cars Georgie Jr. say he trust you Condoleezza Tell our allies of the greedy oil wall, but then he make you clean all the White House bathrooms, the tub, the sink, the toilet, and then scrub the floor. They tell you don't wear sandals, Condoleezza. Your cold chip toenails make them want a wretched fuse. Your nappy leg hair look just like it be Velcro. The GOP want you to be that token screw. Uh -huh. One day while you be flipping pancakes, you may realize that they treat you just like your Esther That's when your head will move from side to side, Condoleezza. Here till Bush and Rummy, they be cracker assholes. 10 at 560 WQM. Happy Friday to you. Well, I'll tell you, this great Condoleezza article that's being faxed to me right now by one of our listeners, John in Fort Myers. Thank you, John, or wherever the hell he is. It's coming over, but God, it's so long, John. It's so freaking long it goes on, but I'll still read it anyway. 192 votes on the poll. Which event in the last 25 years has had the greatest negative impact on South Florida? Marielle Boatlift. Mary, Mary Litos. Don't get upset about it, unless you want to. 100. Miami Marielle Boatlift. 100 votes, 51%. The 2000 Hanging Chat election, 59. Hurricane Andrew, 15. Alien and Liberty City Rides tied for dead last with only 11. Way in the rear end. Let's take a call or two and see if we continue with the great stuff we're getting, and then we'll read that. I'll read the article. Here's a Pembroke Park. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Did I hear you correctly the other day and say that you gave up cigars? Yeah. Oh, damn. Sorry. Here's uh, pa uh, Pompano Beach. Neil. Yes, sir. Man, you better be careful with that Fox Network, or they're going to pull out the real heavyweights, and uh, Shepard Smith might call. Oh, on no. Monday. Oh, I can't handle that. Or, or maybe that hard-hitting Neil Cavuto. Let me, let me ask you this. Do you think that Shepard Smith and uh, what's the guy, uh, uh, Combs, Alan Combs, do you think they got off the same ship? I'll tell you, both of them look like aliens today. Bizarre. They look like alien. 
And you you once said that Shepard Smith used to work for Channel 7 News. He used to be right there in our parking lot, right behind IOD. He used to, like, wave, kind of like a, a little kind of a faggy wave when he walked by, yeah. Well, that explains a lot. Uh-huh. Well, well, well probably, that probably rubbed off on him. There was, I, I tell you, what a fruit farm that was at Channel 7, man. You know, if that if that lady up in New York wants to defend black people, why defend somebody who's a multi-multi-millionaire? And why not go and defend the disenfranchised black voters down no, but, here in but, Florida? No, but listen to this. What difference does it make what her opinion is? I didn't invite her to call in on a show and, and give me a lecture about Condoleezza or about the administration. I, uh, the point I try to make here is that it's, the, at least at this point, still somewhat a free country, and I don't have to like Condoleezza or George W. or John Ascroft or any of these other Wolfowitz, any of these other Nazis, Rumsfeld. I don't have to like them, which she doesn't seem to understand. She's giving me a lecture about, oh, but she's so educated. But it's a, it, Plus, it's a satire. It's a parody. And Talk about a humorless bitch. And if they had their way, she wouldn't be allowed to vote either. That's right. You, you better believe it. Yeah, okay, I'm going to go out and kiss a Schwarzer. Good morning. All right. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Only on the cheek, though. Watch it. Condoleezza's nonsense about democracy, writes John Chuckman, yellowtimes.org column. This is a Canadian website. How you doing, Ch John? How's it going, eh? Condoleezza Rice wants to bring in democracy to the Middle East. Ms. Rice, an expert on what is now an obsolete subject, the Soviet Union, believes this can be done the way the United States brought democracy to Chile or Iran or Afghanistan, that is, by violently overthrowing governments. Does democracy come from the full belly of a B-52 and the murderous aftermath of coups? Apparently not. Virtually none of the countries that America's freedom-loving army of enlightenment has bombed and shot up over the last 60 years is today democracy. One is reminded of the claims of Napoleonic France that it was spreading revolutionary principles by conquest. The conquest part was vigorously pursued, but the liberté, égalité, fraternité part left a little something to be desired. Pardon my French, it sucks. Ms. Rice displays little understanding of the history of democracy or the circumstances which make it possible. She's not alone in this. Former Secretary of State Madeleine Albright's efforts on democracy initiatives displayed a similar lack of understanding, although it must be said in Ms. Albright's favor, she was less inclined than ever the hysterical Ms. Rice to classify unprovoked attack by the great powers an initiative for democracy. Democracy is simply a natural development of a healthy, growing society. Over the long term, it requires no revolution, no coup, and no sacred writ. It grows and blooms as automatically as flower seeds tossed in a good patch of earth, although it's a plant whose maturity is measured in human lifetimes rather than seasons. The early United States, after its revolution, was no more a democracy than was the mother country. The growing authority of parliaments had long limited the authority of Britain's monarchy. Even that mighty ruler, Elizabeth I, more than a century and a half before George III and the American Revolution, felt the limits of parliament closing in on her. George III, despite later American myths, was very much a constitutionally limited monarch. For some time up to and during the Revolution, there were many prominent American colonists who felt that the machinations of the British Parliament were thwarting the intentions of the king and endangering the health of the empire. Even at that early time, people understood that elected government was just as capable of bad policy as a royal one or an aristocratic one. Indeed, the genius of the British unwritten constitution was seen by most thoughtful American colonists as being in the way it combined uh, uh, the three forms of government to offset each other, the direct origin of the American concept of checks and balances by three branches of government. While the British franchise was then highly restricted, it was no less so in the early U.S. It's estimated that maybe 1% of the population could vote in early Virginia with all the restrictions of age, sex, race, and ownership of property. That's actually roughly comparable to the percentage of people making decisions in contemporary communist China, where about 60 million party members hold sway over 1.2 billion people. The American Revolution didn't produce anything resembling a democracy, nor did the later Constitutional Convention. It took about 200 years of growth and change in the U.S. for that to happen. The powerful Senate, unable to block the elected president's appointments and treaties, only changed from being an appointed body to an elected one in 1913. The Senate to this day uses undemocratic operating rules and bizarre election patterns to shield it against public opinion. The popular vote for president didn't matter originally, apart from the fact that only a small number of males meeting pro uh, property requirements could vote. The members of the Electoral College, drawn from political elites, were the ones whose votes actually counted. This absurdly out-of-date and anti-democratic institution still exists, and it can cause serious problems, as we saw in the erection of 2000. Women only got the vote in 1920. Blacks in the American South only received an effective franchise a few decades ago. In some places, like parts of Florida, recent elections suggest that methods may still operate to limit the franchise of black citizens. America has two parties sharing a quasi-monopoly on political power, and they produce much the same effects in the body politic that quasi-monopolies produce in the marketplace. The two quasi-monopoly parties are financed through a corrupt system of private donations. America herself still has a considerable way to go along the path to democracy. Yet Americans generally believe that their revolution and constitutional convention created a full-blown democracy and near-perfect system of government right from the start. 
Perhaps this explains the blind faith of people like Ms. Rice, Condoleezza, and thinking that if you can just have a big war or coup somewhere, you can create a democracy. Democracy comes gradually because it represents a massive social change that affects all relationships in society. The chief driving force toward democracy is the emergence of a strong middle class whose members have too much at stake to leave decisions to a king or group of aristocrats. The size of the middle class expands by steady economic growth. In the West, this process of change has proceeded steadily since the Renaissance and the rise of science and applied technology with variations in the pattern of individual countries reflecting adjustments to peculiarities of local culture, invasions, civil wars, and varying rates of economic change. Many of these societies America looks askance at in the world today make no progress toward democracy because they make little progress of any kind, especially economic progress. Static societies with little or no economic growth are ones where ancient customs and social relationships do not change, where kings or warlords rule just as they did thousands of years ago in early societies. Economic growth is like a magical solvent that begins to erode old relationships, and given enough of it over a considerable per period of time, it erodes old ways of governing completely. This process is observable even within regions of a country. The American South was remarkably backward and static for a good part of the 20th century, but the shift of business and middle-class population to the Sun Belt during the middle of the century brought some rapid change, ergo the phenomenon known as the New South. It has been said that if in the wake of 9-11 the United States truly had wanted to battle for democracy and human rights, it would have dropped dollar bills rather than bombs on Afghanistan. That, of course, is an exaggeration, but it contains important truth. The U.S. could make a genuine contribution to the spread of democracy were it to focus its attention on the economics of the world's more backward places. It might start with some generosity in foreign aid. The U.S. is the stingiest of all advanced countries in giving economic assistance to poor countries, giving it an annual rate of one-tenth of one percent of its GDP. Reducing or doing away with American agricultural subsidies that impoverished third-world farmers would also be a great help. So would the tariff and non-tariff barriers that the U.S. uses against many products from these struggling countries. Paying its dues to the U.N. and ending its childish carping about that important institution would help, since U.N. agencies perform many valuable services for the world's children, its refugees, and international cooperation and understanding. In general, concern for democracy calls for the U.S. to start behaving more like a responsible neighbor in the international community and rather less like an 18th century French aristocrat who barely notices as his carriage stumps over the body of whoever happens to be in its path. Written by John Chuckman in Canada. It says, John Chuckman is a former chief economist for a large Canadian oil company. He has many interests in his lifelong student of history. I bet you it's not Chevron. He wouldn't be picking on poor Condoleezza, that Chevron Mooley. Good column. Thank you very much, John, <coughs> whoever you are. 11 past 10 at 560 WQAM. we got the Mad Dog coming up at 1 o'clock. That big game on Monday night, baby. You can feel. Can't you smell the pressure? I hear Mad Dog yesterday rambling out about, well, you know, uh, uh, he's got that bad knee, uh, Brett Favre. I mean, they're so way ahead in their division. Kind of like suggesting they should sit him out, you know, on Monday nice. night. When in doubt, sit him out. That going to happen, you think? No. No chance. No chance. going to be ugly, I think. going to be really ugly. That high school quarterback, you know, Ray Lucas? Mm. He's going to be crapping his pants before the game. And then once the game starts, uh-oh, maybe better loan him Moe's bag. Hey, speaking of mold, we all have different lifestyles, and therefore we need different things to make us uh, our health the best. Oleum and Mediterranean formulas are advanced combinations of pharmaceutical-grade olive oil combined with lots of other good things. They're in there. I don't suggest you bite open the capsule to check them out, but they're in there. Vitamins, minerals, herbals, take my word for it, and other nutrients, scientifically designed to provide natural nutrition solutions to help you support specific health needs in your body. Look for Oleum and three great new formulas. They have one to help you sleep, one for weight management, and, of course, CoQ10, which is great for your heart, all using the benefits of the purest, the bestest olive oil that you can find. Oleomed is an outstanding product. You can pick some up today, right now. Get in the car and head over to Publix, Eckerd's, or Walgreens. For more information, call Oleomed toll-free at 1-866-OLEOMED. That's 1-866-653-6633. You can also order Oleomed online at oleomedamerica.com. And if you visit your nearest Publix and buy an Oleomed product in Data Broward, wait till you hear this. You can receive a coupon for a free Larry Coker bobblehead doll while supplies last. Don't forget to visit their sampling pavilion at Sports Center every Sunday when the Dolphins be playing home games and pick up some free Oleomed samples and product information and improve your health by popping Oleomed in your puss pretty soon. Live and local, this is Sports Radio 560. QAM. Hey, you bastard. 1016 at 560 WQM. We got a call allegedly from New York. Hello. Good morning. Yes, sir. Neil God. Is, this isn't the ebullion guy, is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, what did I tell you? Oh, am I chronic now? Yes. Uh, that's okay. See, that's bad. Uh, listen, uh, for what it's worth, the CNN pollsters, the analysts, they're analyzing it in the poll, too. Uh, they have Jeb winning by an excess of five points. I don't know where they get that number from, but that's what they say. Yeah. In that case, you have my sympathies. Hey, by the way. Yes. I do an unbelievable Frank Pentangeli. 
Okay, good. Well, uh, call and do it sometime. What did I tell you? Did I tell you? During the break, I said to Carlos, I said, because I looked on the screen here, it said New York. I said, that's either a crank setup call from New York with that uh, Fox crap that was going on, or it's the uh, ebullient guy. And it was the ebullient guy. I mean, he's, he's a good guy, but, boy, talk about chronic. I don't know. If I was in New York, it seems to me I'd have, you know, more productive things to be doing than, like, uh, you know, sitting around calling the show, which we appreciate his loyalty and his uh, patronage, et cetera, and so on. And especially, at least he's, like, got an IQ larger than his thumb, which, uh, you know, because it's coming from New York, it's probably a better call than we get from down here, which is not an indictment of the callers here, is it? Yes. Yes, yes, it is. Man. See, I, I don't think that, you know, it makes for great theater and great radio and great drama, and it's exciting and screaming and yelling, but I don't think you understand what happened here yesterday, okay? I don't, I don't think a lot of you people understand what this is all about, what's going on in this country. That's why the country's in the shape that it is right now. There's too many stupid people out there living with blinders on in la-la land, dumb like Fredo, not smart like us, dumb like Fredo, who'd say too many Hail Marys when they go fishing. Look what happened to him, huh? But a bing. And by the way, Mad Dog, here's our Super Bowl ring. Rhymes with but a bing. So you stick to your, your team. Worry about them, okay? Don't worry about the goddamn Patriots. We got our problems, big problems, but you worry about your own team, okay? Suck pretty bad there against Buffalo, against a marginal girls team. Anyway, what happened here yesterday was a disgrace. People calling from the outside. Who the hell knows who put these assholes up to this, and it's not really important at this point. Although we have a pretty good idea. But nevertheless, call in here to give me a song and a dance about, well, how dare you be a plane? Why are you doing it? Because we feel like it. Because it's my goddamn radio show. It's a radio station in Miami, Florida. And if you're looking to stir up a bunch of goddamn racial hate, last night, by the way, in a Hannity and uh, Coon show, whatever the hell that thing is, that's what they were talking about. So that, that's obviously the point that the right-wing fascist news network is trying to make. Oh, you black folks, don't buy into these liberals, man. And that, that's the whole thing with us. That Andrew, I'm a self-hating fag Sullivan column in his website. You can look it up if you want. That's what it's all about. Doesn't mention my name, but just makes reference to that white uh, talk host in Florida. Oh, yeah, all these liberals, they're racist. Well, I got news for you, okay, all my dark friends out there. If you got to choose between all those limousine liberals and these fascists, it's not much of a choice. Not much of a choice. Pathetic. Like they're fooling somebody. All this is an effort to keep them home on Tuesday because they're scared crapless that have a whole, an enormous bunch of dark folks uh, vote on Tuesday. And it's going to be a lot more difficult to disenfranchise them this time than it was two years ago. That they could tilt the, uh, not just here in Florida, but other places as well. Like in South Carolina. And Arkansas. Places like that. Other Yahoo places. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. Give me a song. That give, give me a primer about Condoleezza and how bright she is. I don't care if she's got an IQ of 700, okay? She's the house Negro. That's what she is. Nothing more, nothing less. She's about as heavy as a goddamn uh, feather. Talk about lightweight. She, to call her a lightweight will be an insult to every lightweight that's ever been born. The only thing lighter than her talents is her skin color, and that's the reason that she's in there. Oh, that's right. You didn't see them point after he, after he retired from the Congress. You didn't see them uh, appoint J.C. Watt in there, did you? No. No way. We already had one Watt. He was a disaster. Let's put Bill Tanner in here. He can go around saying, what? He can do that real good. And other things, too. Here's a lady in plantation. Hello. Hi. Yes, ma'am. Hey, Neil. You're getting me all worked up here. Good. Um, I missed yesterday's show. I'm sorry. But well, I'm I'm gonna play, I'll play it again at uh, 1030. Oh, my God. Listen, what do you think that woman would have thought about all the, um, why doesn't she go after Saturday Night Live for everything they did to Janet Reno? I mean, and, everybody and the, thought and, that you know, was And funny. there was something, the best part of that to show you that at least Janet Reno had a sense of humor. She, about she, it. Went on, she went on the show. I know. She went on the show and played right along with it. I know. This is great. Um, I, I just want to say something about um, the, the way that the country's in right now, and, and, and I think that, I, to me, Everything is political. I mean, t I'm talking about what shoes should I wear this morning? Oh, wait, let's take a poll. What kind of tie should I have? Let's take a poll. You know, <laughs> no, wait, right. no. Seriously, things like stem cell research, he has to go ask the religious right what they think before he can make a policy. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? When well, it comes be, to between Cuba. The, between the religious right and the NRA, man, that's what runs this country the today. What? Oh, speaking of the NRA, are we any safer now than we were before 9-11? No. I mean, 
Why doesn't anybody talk about our borders? Yeah. Why doesn't anybody talk about our nuclear facilities? And, and let me ask you this we, question. Wouldn't you think after what happened here a few days ago with that boat with the Hazens uh, coming in, and today they got this big story in the Sun Sentinel about how they had to build their own rickety, like Noah and the Ark. They built their rickety Ark, and they came over. Like we're supposed to feel sorry for this. If we can't control our borders, then what? what's all this dog and pony show about homeland security? But, Neil, nobody's listening. Now they don't like give a you crap. said, nobody's listening. Do you know how many times I've tried to write to and call Jeb Bush? Just about the nuclear facilities. Yeah. I want to know who's guarding them. Do we still have those rent a cops? You know, oh, well, you know, oh. The, the people that you see in the uh, the, con the condo commando in those little uh, exactly gate houses on the weekend it. they go and they guard Turkey Point. That's right. No, no, but everything from oil, you know, and the Saudis. And, and, and as a matter of fact, I don't, I don't know if you saw it on Monday. There was a story on Channel Four News, which I couldn't find in any newspaper on Tuesday. About the six people they intercepted, or they didn't catch them, six people in a uh, van, it was a white van again, by the way, who tried to get into the nuclear point, uh, the turkey point, the nuclear plant. Did you see that? No. Yeah, and it never made the newspapers. We never read one more word about it, and bada bing, that was the end of that story. It was on Channel 4 News Monday well, a lot a, a, of, afternoon. the end of a lot of stories. I mean, a couple of years ago when they stopped those guys in the Midwest and they had the uh, map of turkey point. Right. We never heard about never that. Never heard either. another word about that, just like those buses that were being hijacked. No, but I don't understand. We got a president that's doing more fundraisers. Mm -hmm. He's always at a fundraiser. Right. I mean, there's yeah. shootings in in Washington, and he's at a fundraiser. Mm -hmm. You know, we're at war. He's at a fundraiser. Yeah. Uh, Dick Cheney. He's at a fundraiser. Now, but let me tell you something else about political. Why can't the farmers in the Midwest who want to make money se selling the grain to Cuba? Are we going to let one small, tiny group of people dictate the whole U.S. policy that has nothing to do with South Florida? Yes. Well, <laughs> no, but it doesn't... Yes. Really... The answer to your question is yes, they it's already the... are. But it's the same thing about Ilion. Why can't people have the nerve to step forward and say, these are the laws of the United States government... We have to be consistent. This is the way we've always yeah, you know, done You know it. what it's like? It's like this thing with the Vatican, like a canon law. Well, we don't care what the laws of the country are. We make up our own laws as we go along. And that's the way it is with the, this old Cuban uh, mafia that we have here in South Florida. They make up their own goddamn rules but as they go along. But this is America. Well, the that, law should be for the good of the American people. Yeah, but you're in Broward County, okay? You're not in Dade County. Okay. Dade County has stopped being America a long time ago. But with this administration, about 40 years it's not ago. just Cuba. Think about the Muslim population in Michigan. They are going to dictate the policy. Now, you know those guys that, that uh, closed down the whole strip of uh, because they made those jokes to piss off that woman? Yeah. You know, they really wanted to get her riled up. Mm -hmm. Nothing's going to happen to them because it's politically incorrect right now to do anything to a Muslim. But the guy who got fired for the anthrax thing with the sweet and low, Steve Hackle, oh, he yeah. lost his mm -hmm. job. Right. And I'll tell you something else. The mood of the country, it's too bad because nobody will stand up. You know, we just lost Paul Wellstone. This is a guy who stood up for his principles no matter what anybody thought or no matter if it was politically correct or incorrect. I know you didn't like Bill Maher, but Bill Maher, oh. wouldn't, I, <laughs> Bill Maher got pushed <laughs> off the air. Because it was politically incorrect to say he said the word nigger on his show many times. Yeah. And he also you know, criticized and, the government. And let me ask you something. Well, we know why he got uh, knocked off the air because of his grotesque comments about at least the uh, hijackers had guts. That, that, was, right. that was unacceptable. But, you know, he had a right to, to say that they the also show? had a right. Huh? To lose the show over it? Sure. Absolutely. Because the sponsors all bailed out. I mean, if you're going to say things that outrageous, you're going to lose all your support and you're going to wind up being off the air. That's what happens. That's the, that's the economic reality of it. Okay, when it comes to our safety. But, but let me ask you this. If he used the word nigger many times, because I never watched that show. I hated yeah, he it. Did. He, but, he, but if he used he the word the nigger all the time, how come How come Heather from Fox wasn't calling and being all over his ass? He had the guy on the show that yeah. wrote the book. Right. And, 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 and you'll notice she didn't, she didn't know who, but when you hear the call, you know she doesn't know who that is, the guy that wrote the book. What? She, she, how could she not know? Because she claims he was never on Fox or she don't know about it. Don't confuse her with the facts, okay? She's just a flunky uh, producer. Okay, uh, one more thing. Yes. Terrorists. I mean, <laughs> terrorists. No, if we're so concerned, okay. Comment. What I was trying to get at Take is a deep breath. why everything is so political. Well, I'm sorry. I haven't talked to you for a long time, and I miss it. <laughs> um, when John Ashcroft sat before the Senate, he said, oh, you guys are all, you know, you're with us or against it, and you're not being very patriotic. But then when he was asked, he said, the FBI wants a list of the people who bought guns at the gun shows in Michigan to see if any of the terrorists were on the list, all of a sudden, 
it was unpatriotic to go after the NRA. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, just like you, the oil companies, the religious right, whoever it is that's got Bush's ear, they are controlling everything, and it doesn't matter what we think at all. And they have no pit bulls on the side of the Democrats. We have no Tom DeLays. We have nobody to go bang on doors. We have nobody who's going to go after him because, it's you know, they're all scared. They're all scared. Vote about four times on Tuesday just Can to make sure. Can you think of anybody in the Democratic Party that stands up like Trent Lott and Tom DeLay with their fists in the air and tax everybody? No, but Dick Gabbard came along and he said we ought to, like, give, uh, we ought to give amnesty to all these uh, 10 million people or whatever it is in the country. That's the kind of crap we get from the Democrats, so we're screwed. Have a great weekend. Just uh, forget about it. Hide under the bed. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll see you. Bye-bye. 1027 and 560, crawl under the bed, okay, because we want to let everybody in. Dick Gebhardt, there's another guy. He thinks he's going to be president someday. Has he got a chance? No. No, thank goodness. I'd rather see Hillary in there than uh, Dick Gebhardt, and I'd rather cut off both my ankles than uh, have Swillery in there. Oh, don't be making fun of Swillery now. My, my, and local. This is Sports Radio 560. QAQAM. I asked it. Oh, I don't know what it is about them, their whiny little voices, or their big noses, or those goofy hats, tiny little schmeckles. I don't know, they just, they just rub me the wrong way. Anti-Semitism lives in every speech, and love redeems, it's in the news. Hillary hates Jews. Spewing hatred through the halls, busting people's matzo balls, it's in the news. Hillary hates Jews. You won't catch her lighting a menorah. God, she must have a wonderful aura. When she speaks, I want to cry. She could use a good rabbi. It's in the news. Oi! Hillary hates Jews. Here's uh, Heather from Fox News. Hi, Neil. How are you? I'm okay, I think. Good. Thanks for taking our call. We've been trying to reach you for the past couple days. You're trying to reach me? You've called people that haven't been invented yet. you called dead relatives of mine. What's the uh, story, Heather? We're working on a story about uh, the CD you're promoting on your website. That's yeah. called Kiss, a, I won't say it, N-word, Good Morning. Hey, Heather, are you listening to the show? Uh, yes, I am. I've been listening for did, the past couple days. And just so you well, know, wait, we wait are a minute. Did, you, did you hear me go through the entire uh, rationale of what that, that, that song had nothing to do with Condoleezza Rice? Uh-huh. What about the song Condoleezza, Condoleezza? That has that. Well, that's obviously about Condoleezza. Uh huh. Yes. And about I just Kate want to know Smith, why you're why you're playing this on your show. No, I see. I'd like to know why. This is really interesting. Why are you calling me asking me why I should play this? We make we have song parodies about Bill Clinton, dozens of them. Nobody ever complained about that. We have song parodies about Al Gore, dozens of them. Nobody ever complained about those. Well, about there's all the... some uh, African American folks up in here in New York who are pretty offended by it. And... Well, yeah, well, wait a minute. Let me say this to you, Karen. We're not in New York. Uh huh. Okay, we don't broadcast in New York. We're on WQM in Miami. Well, and, and the fact of the matter is that unless, except for people like you and the people at uh, that right wing news. Max.com will want to make a big Simmons about this. If it weren't for that, they wouldn't even be aware that we exist. Neil, okay. there's some, uh, this organization that's uh, offended by it is a national organization. The but but the, the, fact, the fact of the matter is we've been playing these songs for many, many, many months. We've never had one single complaint. And when interlopers like you from outside, like from Fox News or from some right-wing website, want to tell us what, I mean, for you to ask me, how come you're playing that? Because we want to play it. Okay, it's, Neil, it's, but what, what's the comedy. value in it? What, is it, what, is it, what does it do for you? It's what is called, it for audience? It's called comedy. That's what it's called. Do you have a sense of humor? Do you think it's funny to call uh, to call Condoleezza Rice? In in, ad in, 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 in addition, in addition, well, Harry Belafonte called her the House Negro. Okay, so we'll call her whatever we but, want. But this is a little bit different. I mean, he no, was, no, it's not. He the, was it's, taking issue with. It's some not the policy. least bit different. She is the House Negro. See, you people at Fox may not understand this. Not everybody in the world is a right winger like Rupert Murdoch. There actually are those of us who are progressive or moderate, liberal, whatever we are, who also have the right to speak to express whatever the hell we want. So, so you, w repeat again what you just said for me there. You think she is a what? She's the House Negro. Uh-huh. And yeah. you don't find uh -huh. anything wrong with that? Uh-huh. Well, what, what do you mean wrong with that? It's a fact. That's my opinion. Am I entitled to my opinion? Uh, you're, you're certainly entitled uh -huh. to your opinion. And that's, but, you know, and that, and that's basic, folks are wondering and that's why basically, you guys, that's basically what Harry Belafonte said as well. And it's obvious. This is why nobody returned your calls. 
uh, Heather, or whatever your name is, because uh -huh. we knew that you were trying to stir up a bunch of crap and take something out of context. When I asked you, did, I don't think did, there's anything being taken you, out of context. Did you here. listen? Did you listen? See, we're not we're not, been playing, we're not doing the Bill O'Reilly show, okay? Funny. It's my show, and I'm not going to have you scream over me or try to out talk me, okay? It's not going to work. Okay, uh, you know, I, I asked you in the beginning of the conversation, which I was very calm, and I asked you, did you hear me explain the origin of that song, the restitution song? The fact of the matter is, and I don't, I'm sure he must have been on your channel, Randall Kennedy, the black author who wrote the book Nigger, the Strange Career of a Troublesome Word? Not that I'm aware of. Well, he was certainly on CNN. He was on MSNBC. Maybe he wasn't on Fox because he wasn't, I, I don't know, maybe he just didn't, weren't aware of it. You know, I've got a question for are, you. Are you, you. Are you aware of that book? You portray yourself to be this sort of liberal voice, but yet you're... Ma'am, I don't portray, I don't put labels on me. I'm, I'm, for example... Okay, what do you, what would you call yourself to, then, politically? I call myself a human being. You see, you people on Fox, it's this old liberal and a conservative. That stuff went out with high-button shoes, okay? You know, hold on a second. I'm Here's a thinking, living, and breathing human being. being. In addition, in addition to which, why do I have to, in Miami, Florida, answer to some assholes in New York on Fox News how I do my show? What is it your business? There are a lot of people who care, and there are people in Miami they who care, care about this, too. Who, who are they? Well, you're calling... Who are they? Name me one person in Miami who's concerned about it. Folks we know down there, certainly. And I name, name me one. Two. Look, name me one. It's offensive to name lie about me a woman one. Who name is me one. Of a very Honestly, high I don't care. I don't care what you say. We don't. Her we don't like Condoleezza. Okay. Well, have a nice day. Okay. We're calling her whatever we feel like calling her. She's a public goddamn figure. So the beast and blow is it out here, your boys right and ass, and you and Bill. And by the way, O'Reilly didn't make the numbers. Zero. Just calm down. Okay. Two meals uh, in stereo. Anyway, uh, beast didn't lose any weight this week. I got news for you. You better not let that happen again next week, because if it does, then Troy's going to cut off your water and your food, too, and your little black sack. But he stayed the same, 226. He's lost 58 pounds. Oh! Got like a shirt and a real tie on today. Looks almost like a, like a little businessman, almost, you know? Well, like a fat businessman, like a fat Jew businessman from UM. By the way, there are only six touchdown favorites. See, I was asking somebody this morning, why do they play those games? Well, what's the point? Why can't Rutgers just forfeit? Nobody gets hurt that way. You know, six touchdown favor. Well, I see, this is what happens, okay? All you nerds out there, you sports nerds with these teams, ah, we're going to kick some ass, yeah. Little girls teams, okay? At least I admit it, the make-believes last night, they couldn't beat Atlanta Trashers, another girls team, they have to uh, hang on for a tie, a freaking overtime tie, right there in Toronto at the Scare Canada Center. And they're scary, all right. That herky-jerky Lume, I'd like to put him on a slow boat back where he came from. Anyway, so some of, you know where I think this came from? I don't know who faxed me this, this thing, the Heather Newart. That's her name, little Heather, that we just heard again. We'll play it again later about 10, 12 times. It's long. Kills some good time. Heather, N-A-U-E-R-T, Newart, Newart, joined the Fox News Channel as a New York-based correspondent in 2001 after receiving her master's degree in journalism from Columbia University. Well, excuse me, Heather. I'm impressed. Not. In 1998, she became a Washington, D.C.-based Fox News contributor commenting on politics and domestic policy. During that time, she worked as a government affairs cons consultant representing corporations and trade groups before Congress. Her work focused on health care and social security issues. Heather's media work started in Washington in 1992 as a host and producer for former WFTY-TV's weekly program, Young Country. Later, she was a business reporter for First Business, a syndicated business news show. This must have come from them because it was followed up by a bio on Condoleezza. Ah. So evidently, she's, she's got her eye on Condoleezza. Maybe she'd like to do Condoleezza. Maybe that's what it is. Because she takes it very personal and uptight, so to speak. Pardon that expression. That we had the gall to be calling Condoleezza all of these things. You know what I'm saying? We're going to continue doing the show the way we've always done the show, Heather. We're in Miami. And I'll tell you, New York Radio must be really, really bad for you to have to be listening to a goddamn show on the Internet here in Miami. In fact, ask the uh, brilliant guy. He'll probably agree with you. That once Howard goes off in the morning, believe me, I don't even want to go into that. You know what I'm saying? You know old Howard, don't you? The mad dog or the angry puppy. Wrong, Howard. A fishy family triangle. Here's a news journal editorial from Daytona Beach yesterday. Neil Bush igniting profits in the FCAT market. Neil Bush. <laughs> it's a triangle of back-scratching geometry only the first family could pull off. President Bush signs into law a federal requirement that forces states to rely on standardized testing to measure school achievement. Governor Bush makes standardized testing a centerpiece of Florida's A-plus plan, a scheme that turns students into cash cows for their schools if they perform well in the Florida Comprehensive Assessment Test, the FCAT. And youngest brother, Neil Bush, peddles computer software designed to help students study for the FCAT at 30 bucks per student. Talk about a windfall for a prodigal Bush. 
Until recently, Neil Bush had been kept out of family photo ops since his involvement in the $1.3 billion failure of his Colorado Savings and Loan Association in 1988. The failure of Silverado Banking Savings and Loan was one of the most notorious examples of the SNL collapse of the 80s. An SNL regulatory agency found Bush to have engaged in multiple conflicts of interest while director at Silverado. The industry bailout eventually cost taxpayers $1.4 trillion. So a beacon of ethical conduct Neil Bush isn't. The surprise of at least the latest twist in the history of Bush conceits is that Neil's powerful brothers are letting him so candidly triangulate their policies with, their, with his venture. As its founder and CEO, Neil Bush started Texas-based Ignite, Inc. three years ago, swiftly raising $7.1 million from 53 investors in 2000 alone, and so far earning them at least $20 million. Using such devices as rap songs to teach kids about the founding fathers, Franklin, Madison, Washington, a lot of cats who used to be Continental Congress way back, we could sing it. Ignite has developed a middle school curriculum heavy on the use of technology and such gimmickry PR tactics as empowering students to learn according to their own aptitude. We give students a sense of control over their own education by offering choices about how they learn, he said. Whether Ignite is effective is not the, yet the point. The company is too young and its product's too green to judge. The question is how the company's product ended up being used as part of a state-funded experiment in efficiency at a Coe Middle School in the Orlando area. The school has received millions of dollars in state grants for the study, not counting the Ignite software being used there for free. If Neil Bush needed a foot in Florida's door, he got it so readily that Ignite is now being marketed to schools across the state. The Herald reported this week that the Florida Department of Education could find no indication that Ignite had approached the state about its product or that the governor had talked to his brother about the business. Maybe not, but it smells more than a little fishy to use three words that Neil Bush famously used before a congressional committee 12 years ago to describe his own grayish business transactions at Silverado. As Bush triangles go, this one's angles are more rankling than right. Not only are the schools being made ever more dependent on the FCAT strings, but the Bushes, whatever their self-absorbing assurances about Ignite's Florida foothold, seem oblivious of this latest, most profitable conflict of interest. Editorial in yesterday's Daytona Beach uh, News Journal. How do you like that, huh? Very good. Can't complain about their ethics. You want to know why? Because they don't have any. Live and local. This is 560. The radio's all yours now. QAM Friday, you bastards. Yay. There is a girl in extra wide jeans, a girl whose head weighs a ton. <laughs> And she's living with the women and the funny play toys in the house of the lesbians. Hello, George. When she was young at a restaurant with a boy, he didn't know that she was gay until he noticed each time they went out, she went for the seafood buffet. Just look at all Rosie's Dyke sisters now. Just look what they have done. The minute she comes home from work through that door, well off. Her panties come She laid it down To stop publishing the rosy mag Left a laid off staff Not paid And Rosie's girlfriend Who's pregnant right now I guess she just only got laid there is a girl with extra wide jeans. Entertainer she's become. And she goes by the name of Rosie O.D. In the house of the lesbians. It's time to get it on. 1047 at 560 WQM. Happy Friday, too. We're having another wonderful day here today. Thanks for your resume, uh, Heather. We have no openings at the moment, though. Here's a fax that says, I just want to thank you for such a wonderful show yesterday. It took some real cojones for that lady to call and discuss her problem on the air. 
Condoleezza is a public figure and therefore open to ridicule, just as any public figure is. I hope you ditch the callers today. Oh, no. I have a feeling we're going to be hearing a lot of faggot and maricone, and after a masterpiece of a show like yesterday's, it would just be a, leave a bad taste in your intelligent listeners' mouths, all three of us. <laughs> hey, listen, don't take it personal, okay? These people can't help themselves. It's just the way they are. And look at where... I don't even blame them. Look where they are. See? I bet you that all these people, when they first came here, they were like rocket scientists. And now they've been here long enough, their brains fry in the sun, they're surrounded by a bunch of uh, blue blue like that, and it rubs off. So I'm always losing it, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Here's a fax from Big L. It's a, that's the scuttlebutt around the building is that Moe's right on edge. So don't be picking on my good buddy Mo, okay? We better start bonding with him. Because I don't want to see him, like, go off the uh, deep end. Although he did leave his depends, like, right outside the door this morning. Forgot to take him. Or was that just his bag? Well, that day that his bag busted open, that was, that was unbelievable. <laughs> that, <laughs> and then he made the beast clean it up. That was the worst part. <laughs> ah! Can't stand it. Oh my God! If there's a butt, I smell. Get it. out of here, okay, Mo. Go home. Have a nice weekend. Relax for that big game on uh, Monday. Don't freeze your uh, don't freeze your tachos off Monday night either. There, it's gonna be colder than hell in Green Bay, you know. So Ricky Williams is what? So here's this fax from Big Al. That says, today's poll question, do you believe Jeb Bush really cares about whether the education budget is properly funded? Well, that's really not today's poll question, but that's what Big Al says. But he points out some interesting things like, Bush GOP uh, economic policies fail Florida families. Do friends and families still need a good reason to vote Democratic November 5? Here's how Republican economic policies avert Florida. 106,400 Florida workers have lost their jobs since Bush took office. 107,100 Florida workers in danger of losing unemployment benefits. 7.7 7.17 billion 401k benefits lost by Florida workers, 415 million lost in the Florida State Pension Fund due to corporate scandals, 17 and a half, 17.5, the percentage of Florida's population currently with no health insurance. What's more, Bush has presided over a 94% decline in the federal, the federal budget surplus. That's 5.3 trillion gone in less than two years. Jeb Bush's administration allowed mutual fund managers that were contributors to his campaign continue to mismanage funds for nearly two years before finally dismissing them. The Republican says it increased the education budget by $3 billion. The fact is, the first year the budget was decreased by 1.5%, the second year by another 1%. The fact is, over four years, in the term of real dollars after factoring in inflation, we're spending about the same. Even though we have more tax revenue than we had four years ago, the actual percentage of the education budget actually takes up is less. The best part is, even though his brother, the education president of the White House, can correct the inequity if Florida still lags behind in per capita federal funding for education. In fact, 80% of all states get better education funding from the federal government than Florida does. Nice going, Jeb. You're going to call up your brother, as Kerry Meek was asking the other day? You're going to call him up? No. Several times he's placed a veto on funding for the inner city after school education programs in Dade County. He vetoed other inner city funding programs that edu uh, educational pursuits. Huh? Right now, Florida ranks 49th in high school graduation rate and 44th in the country in SAT scores. Lovely. Well, thank you, Jeb Bush, for improving Florida's education system. Imagine we finished ahead of six states in the SATs, and it was actually one state with the worst graduation rate. We're doing it. How do you like that? Thanks, Big Al. Good point. And then guess what I saved? I saved this article from way back on October 16 from the Sun Sentinel by Steve Goldstein. Not Geldy. Not that Steve Goldstein. What? Stephen L. Goldstein in the Sun Sentinel who says, Whack back on November 5, and he's got uh, 24 reasons to vote against Jeb Bush on Tuesday. I'm just going to read these again just as a reminder a little while. Just as a reminder, not that I'm going to have any great impact. Don't get all nervous, Heather, okay, and all you right-wingers up there at Fascist News Network. Don't get all paranoid and psychotic. 319 votes on the poll. What event in the last 25 years has had the greatest negative impact on South Florida? Mary Elba, you know what we forgot to put on there? What? Mo coming to town. <laughs> oh, we better add that on there, Eric. That needs to be the... Sixth choice, kind of even it out. We don't have enough choices on there. I don't like the polls where we have limited choices. Mo Howard arrives in uh, Miami. Don't you think that merits being on there? Oh, that's right. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. He won't bond with you in the hall if you get on his bad side. Now, what was so funny about that bag break? And I thought it was disgusting myself. Here's a higher Leah. Hello. Uh, Neil. Yes, sir. Um, you mentioned in the past. Chronic. Oh. That we've stolen. Oh. You've had all your liberal friends talk. Can I say something? I beg your pardon? You've had all your liberal friends call up and talk. Can I say My something? My liberal friends? Yes. You're that's, chronic. That's like that screeching woman. It's got nothing to do with what you're going to say. You're just chronic. Well, you I can't handle your voice. You make me, you've got a creepy voice. 
Can't not, doesn't he have a creepy voice? Yeah, he does. Ooh, my skin is crawling. I feel like I got like uh, red ants. Maybe it was the drugs that Petey Lenny left in here. It's got nothing to do with what you want to say. It's just you. You know, I mean, have somebody else call and say it. Write it down. Five. And by the way, how long did I leave that bitch on here yesterday that was giving me a bunch of crap? She was on here for like five minutes. So don't give me this garbage about I only let people talk who agree. That's bull crap. I just don't like chronics. I don't want no chronics. Just because we're back to taking calls again, the one thing I'm guarding against is chronics, like that asshole Dennis that called in yesterday. I had to dump him for his intemperate remark. Get some mental help, okay, Dennis, before you hang out with you. And Dennis had a great time last night. He went out trick-and-treating with his boyfriend for Halloween-y. He said he liked the trick part. Here's uh, Miami. Hello. It's the Neo Napoli. Hey, Neil, you know what I think we should do with all these Haitians? Send it to... Oh. Too many greasers here today, man. Here's Palm Beach. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Could you uh, answer a question? Who was the House Negro for Clinton? Did he have any blacks around him besides uh, Miss uh, Betty Curry? He was surrounded by blacks. Bill Clinton, name fact, one. Name one fact, he had where, in his where, Let me ask you this. Where does Bill Clinton live now? Where's his office? That's not my question. Where is his office? Did he have he any had more, House sir, Negroes? He had more blacks and minorities in his administration than anybody else in his, uh, history. I'm not going to sit here and wait and try to give you an education, okay? What the hell? And by the way, Bill Clinton ain't on the ballot, and neither is uh, George W. Where, see, always try to divert, divert, deflect. You know, you see, this one was worse. Uh, not true. More minorities than any president in history served in Clinton's two uh, terms. It's not a debatable fact. And you can scream and you can holler and you can get all bent out of shape. You're one of those assholes you can't... They don't confuse this guy with the facts, okay? Because they're very dangerous. The facts are very dangerous. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon Wireless line. Here's South Miami. Hello. Hey, good morning, Neil. Yes, sir. I got to follow that trifecta, huh? Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. Should be easy. <laughs> anyway, man, first time I heard that new bit you have on the... Uh... With a uh, Mo and uh, Arande and uh, Gelding. Yeah. I swear to God, I almost crashed my new truck into a wall. I'll tell you, I played it for several people here yesterday after the show. I hadn't heard it yet. I thought Hank was going to have a stroke. I think was so red in the face. Get the big kick out of those. He, he loves them. Quietly, but, you know. No, not less. quietly. He was laughing so loud you could hear it next door. <laughs> anyway, real quick, I did my good deed for the uh, vote on um, on Tuesday. Yeah. Went to my mom's house. He has four elderly neighbors that mail in their ballots. Of course, being Cuban. Guess who they will want to vote for? Mm. But guess who filled in the uh, the paper? All right. I don't know the difference. Excellent. Nice you know work. what I mean? Yeah. So there's, we got four on our side, man. Yeah, see, we can do it, too. Payback is a bitch. <laughs> I, I could get in trouble for that, right? Hey, we're tracing the call right now. Listen, we're going to turn you over to Heather at the Fascist News Network. She said, you know what she reminds me of? Remember that lady that called you uh, a, a while ago uh, talking about Aruca? And she said, I don't know. Oh, Francisco Aruca. Remember that bitch? Yeah. As it sounds like her, maybe it is the same. Now, wait a minute. If you hang on just one second, she's, uh, where the hell is she? She's I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, Neil, real quick, I know you got to go. Mandich is a bomb. He called Cephalo a wuss on live TV the other night. I almost pissed my pants. Boy. Yeah, he is. He, he is in, a panic, bro. In more ways than one. Okay, right, have a great day, care, man. See ya. He called Jimmy Cephalo a pussy? Wow. I don't know. How do you like that? I'm not going to win the Jimmy Cephalo stuff, okay, because Jimmy's a pretty good guy, but he's, uh, he's, uh, Here's uh, West Palm Beach. Hello. Yeah, Neil, that was that was awesome. This conversation with Heather. She's uh, she's she's a hottie. Uh, I've seen her on the on the on the network here. Now, now let me ask you something. Has, has she got a has she got a show? I thought she was a producer. She's got her own show. No, she doesn't have her own show. She's she's one of their reporters. She used to appear. She was going to uh, actually she was going to journalism school at Columbia at the same time. Gore was a um, you know after the election, Gore was. Would, wouldn't Indian? Hockey. Yeah. And she would come on Bill O'Reilly's show and sort of, oh. like, uh, spy, you know, uh, on Gore and tell, you know, just kind of uh, try to make Gore look bad on mm-hmm. Bill O'Reilly's show. But she's, you know, she's she's like probably about 27, 28, very hot blonde, you know, huh. typical Fox News. Now, did she wear that heavy, uh, uh, that orange uh, pancake makeup? Uh, you know, she's not... Uh, you know, I don't know. She's just uh, your typical kind of like. No, but what I'm trying, uh, what I'm trying to say is that everybody who appears on Fox News Network has to wear like about 14 layers yep. of orange pancake. They, uh, you, you want to adjust the uh, the contrast or the the hue on your TV set, and of course, then you turn to another channel and you realize it's not your set. But the, the reason I really wanted to call though is um, with the election only like four days away. Yes, or whatever, sir. I want to make sure that 
you discussed this um, attorney general candidate who's running on the Republican ticket. Yeah. The guy who flunked the bar like three or four times and mm -hmm. went to Bumberland Law School in, yeah. in, in Alabama. He hasn't got a Chinaman's uh, chance. Well, he's ahead in every poll. He is ahead in the polls? He's ahead in every poll because nobody knows anything about him or the other guy. He just has these... He has these commercials that he talks about chain gang Charlie that, you know, he wants to reinstitute the chain gang. Oh, yeah, I've seen those, right. I've service, seen those spots, right. Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the other guy, nobody really knows about him. But, I mean, you compare with, like, the attorney general in New York, Spitzer, and going after all the big corporations. Right. And this guy, who flunked the bar three or four times and, and basically is a total empty suit. And he's going to be the attorney general of Florida. I think it's pretty funny. Yeah, well. Par for the course. After Bobby Buddy, Buddyworth, I mean, what can you expect, you know? And the new, the new slogan for Bobby Buddyworth is going to be out there in the cruise ships, not going to, uh, not going to slot machines into the ocean. The new slogan for the state of Florida, yeah. or new motto, whatever. Thank God for Mississippi. Okay. All right. See take ya. care. Mississippi's number fifty. We're number forty-nine. Oh. All right. So thank God there's a Mississippi, right? And ain't it a treat to beat your feet on the Mississippi mud? <laughs> Sports Radio 560, QAM. The Banana Republic, baby. Only in Miami. Now, Noelle Bush, daughter of Florida Governor Jeb Bush, records her first page from her prison audio diary. I cannot believe that pompous, egotistical judge actually sentenced me to jail. Me? To jail? Hello? Do you see my last name on the documents? Bush, by the time my dad Jeb gets done with him, he won't be able to scratch his danglers without the heat coming down on him. He won't even be able to get an internship with Bird, the black bailiff from Judge Judy. I wonder if the prison pharmacy will accept my script for Xanax. <sighs> They better. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea to wedge all that crack in my Manola Blahniks. I should have stowed the junk in the trunk, if you know what I mean. I got 10 days in jail, and my booze hound cousin Jen escapes. My father's got no juice. He can rig an election, but he can't keep his own flesh and blood out of jail. Oh, did I say that? I didn't mean that. Anyway, I gotta go. We got a big game of hide the carrot going in the rec room. Did I say that? I didn't mean that. 1102 at 560 WQAM. In fact, one of the first appointees, and of course then she got railroaded and uh, knocked out of there by the right-wingers. Remember uh, Jocelyn, Joycelyn Elders. The That's first, right. She was the uh, head of the HHS. Poor Joycelyn Jocelyn. She was a little bit too radical, though, for the right-wing, and they, like, hounded her ass out, her black ass out. So don't give me the song to dance about, well, who did Clinton, who was his house Negro? Yeah, right. And who was this buddy that was always playing golf with, making those uh, sexist comments about? Real dark black guy. Boy, isn't that something? I can't remember his name. Yeah, that, and, and they asked him, well, what do you guys talk about when you... And he said, uh, you know, we don't talk about world affairs. All we talk about is C. But that was his name. I can't believe I can't remember him. Real dark guy. Anyway, somebody will call him. 340, uh, what is it? Oh, Moe's already got two votes. He just went on there. 352 votes. One event in the last 25 years had the greatest negative impact on South Florida. Mo Howard comes to town, too. Liberty City Riots, 14. Aileon, 22. Small Potatoes. Hurricane Andrew, 33. The 2000 Hanging Chat Election, 97. And the Marielle Bolt left is uh, winning big time, 184. What are, you, what are you laughing? What are you smirking about? <laughs> I find it funny that my people have come over here and caused such ruckus. You're a Marielito? Well, no. So, so why is it your people? Well, human people come no, over no, here no, and no, no. ruckus. Don't say your people, okay? Don't. And a lot of your people would be very upset to have you say that. Don't lump them in with the Marielito uh, rivals because a lot of those people, as I said yesterday, were some of the worst hardened criminals from uh, Castro's prisons and nuthouses. The worst of my peoples. Oh, the worst The worst of your people's bees. Okay, don't forget to join uh, Mike Hard's Lemonade. Mike's Hard's Lemonade. See, now I'm saying it on everything. Oh, and you know whose wife was on last night on one of the talking heads, I think, with Connie Chink? Who? Uh, the Moosey Man. The white, uh, pudgy, blind boy. She's a foul mouth bitch. You know what? What they had to like bleep her and stuff? No, or? but I mean, she's she's uh, she didn't say anything over the line, but pretty close to it. I mean, she's uh, got a big mouth, big blonde, buxom, fat. Join Mark's Hard Lemonade and Joe Costello days from three to five at the uh, Publix located on Northwest 128th Street, Michigan Boulevard, North Miami. Stop by to win crappy QM prizes, but you can register to win tickets to the big race sponsored by. Um, on November uh, 16. No, we can't say that either because we don't want to get the people at Mike's Hard Lemonade upset. We don't want to say, I'll just go wiser, okay? Or is it better to go bud wiser? 5670560. San Francisco, this couldn't be real. Hello. 
Good morning, Neil. How yep. are you? Okay. Or good afternoon in your part of the world. Good I think evening. Clint, Clinton's black friend was Jordan somebody, and don't forget Donna Shalala, who told everybody to give it a tug instead of having premarital sex. No, that was uh, Jocelyn Elders. Oh, that okay, okay. Donna Shalala is very white, and she's at the U of M. Oh. And a dyke. But at oh. any rate, now, Jordan, uh, Vernon Jordan. Thank you. I mixed up my cronies there. It was either Michael Jordan or Vernon Jordan. One of them, number yeah. 23. Or... Gee, right. Are you aware that Condoleezza Rice has her own oil tanker named after her? It wouldn't surprise me. Um, she was a big Chevron board of directors. Right, Chevron I know that. That's why I don't buy gas at Chevron ever. Big company out here, um, also with Stanford. And she's kind of the poster child for hitting the glass ceiling. Uh, you couldn't want more as a Republican to be on the board of directors of Chevron and to be a plant in the White House mm -hmm. for an oil company. Right. Um, I want to tell so thank you thank God that the president and vice president don't have those oil connections. Thank God for that. Oh, no, they're clean. They have, it's no conflict <laughs> of interest there. Right. Um, they're all for hydrogen and alternative fuel. Absolutely. Um, I want to tell you the double standard about uh, the N-word. I get a lot of emails from younger people that I work with, and you know how they start? M apostrophe N I G G A. Nigga. Ma nigga. Oh, ma yeah, ma nigga, yeah. It's a term of endearment. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, myself, I'm a heterosexual Christ killer, so I don't know why they're calling me their nigga, but I guess I'm happy to be held in a little higher esteem. Also, you know that we're so Asian here in San Francisco, over 40%. Yeah. All the little Chinese kids, when they see a white kid go by at the bus stop, yeah. hey, vanilla bitch. Really? Oh, yeah. Vanilla and what bitch? Do they call them that? A, you know something? That's the first time I ever heard that in my life. Vanilla bitch? Yeah. Well, you know, trends start in California and go east. It hasn't arrived in Toronto yet because we got a zillion uh, Asian people You've out there. You've got a lot of flavor of bitches in Toronto. Oh, but yeah. We, we, we're long on vanilla bitches here, huh. but we're in the minority. I'll be damned. And so when the white bitch. kid turns around and calls the Chinese kid, hey, you chigga, which is short <laughs> for Chinese nigga. So we got vanilla bitches and chiggas here All on right. the West Coast. And uh, the war will start soon. And in closing, Neil, we all love you. And hey, Heather, gargle me, babe. <laughs> okay. See you, my man. See ya. Great call from San Francisco. How do you like that? Yeah, Heather, they're not too fond of you, okay, your routine that you put on here yesterday. First of all, that lying routine about, well, we want to do a story about Neil's great ratings and how he's dominated that market all these years. Giving that to, uh, who are you talking to, Dave Hagan? She said that to don't be calling here lying to our producers, okay, to try to get my home phone number and bug me, okay? And the good news is I only had three uh, solicitation calls yesterday. Get so better. I, so I didn't try the Star uh, 69 or whatever it is. Now, what is Star 69 besides what you obviously have in mind? What is, what is that? Star 69 uh, re lets your phone call back the last number that called you. But what's the one that's like the call block? Star 67. Star 67. So if you call somebody that blocks the caller ID? Right. You follow what I'm saying? Star, you're sure of that? Yeah. Because there are times I've wanted to do that. You know, could use the star 67, but I didn't want to, like, have them see my uh, phone number on the call, caller ID. Right. You star 67, wait for the dial tone, and then dial. In fact, that'd be a great way for me to I And mean, what I'm going to do this weekend, I think, because it's so boring here, I'm just going to sit home and make crank calls. No, I've taken them for 26 years here. I'm going to make crank calls all weekend. I'm just going to go up and down the phone book. Little payback? Yeah, star 67. And, and in fact, I'm going to call uh, that guy in Hialeah before with that creepy voice. Oh, my, my skin is still crawling from him. He, he could be a very nice guy. He's been listening for a long time. But your voice, it just, oh, whoo. I'm serious. I got the chills just thinking about him. Here's a lady from Boca. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, ma'am. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe I'm talking to you. I've been listening to you for six years. All right. And I think you're wonderful. Yes, I'm also I am. a registered Republican. But mm. you know what? Did you know that you were on TV last night? No. You were on John Gibson. Oh, John Gibson. And Heather shows was on they're... there. They were sitting there. They were both talking about it. Well, you know you something? On... It tells me what a big audience uh, John Gibson show has here in town because you're the first person to say anything about they it. They showed you. Yeah. They showed the QAM studios. Wow. Well, and... where the hell did they get that from? I don't know, but it has a bunch of trees in front of it. It's like a three-story building. Yeah. And um, they were talking about you, and they, um, I'm nervous, and they just were, you know, saying racist. And they also, they printed part of the words. Yeah. In the Condoleezza song, and for Schwartz, or they put down Schwartz. Schwartz. Yeah. I so. once went to summer camp with a kid named Gary Schwartz. He was pretty good. <laughs> but you were on TV at about 5:45 last night. And I John? missed it. I'll be damned. I would never yeah. watch John Gibson. You know, once they booted him off MSNBC, I stopped. I forgot about him. Well, the only reason so I watched it. OJ crap. Yeah, the only reason I watched it is because I wanted to see if they were going to mention you, and they did. Never. So how long was this piece on? 
About ten minutes. Ten minutes? And Heather, when she first came on, she shook her head. And she said, yeah, boy, I talked to him. And she was shaking her head like you were real something. Yeah. And she looked, well, she's a bimbo. So, so, so what was the crux, that I'm a racist son of a bitch and uh, here we are at QAM? Under, and here's... Yeah, underneath it said racist, racist radio. Mm -hmm. And um, how, you know, how wrong it is. I, I, it was, you know, kind of like real quick, but because um, we were doing other things. But yeah. it said racist radio and how these people down here, you know, they put stuff like that on. So, but you were on and they had your picture. You look pretty good. I guess I got it made now. Yeah. Yeah, you made national news. Yeah. I hope my mother and other people around the country were I'll watching. be knocking that John Gibson off in no time at all. I'll be on there. Hey, you're much cuter than he is. <laughs> that ain't saying much. You're a lot cuter. And a lot cuter than Alan Combs, I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh, my God, he's ugly. Or Shepard Smith with that Martian moon face. He looks like a clown. He is. He's bizarre. You know what? They all do wear lip gloss. Oh, I know that. I'm not just making that up. They, no, they, they look They wear enough pancake makeup to uh, drown an elephant. <laughs> Have a great day, sweetheart. Thanks, thanks for the spy report. Okay. Have a good one. Bye. Well, we better clean up our act, goddammit. Uh, come on, we got to do the break. So they actually did make a big sentence about that. And what did I tell everybody? These people don't want to listen to me. They want to do a piece and make us look like a bunch of racists and like a whole big song to dance. What, what that's all about, I have no idea. Why is it their concern what we're doing on this little radio station in Miami, Florida? Why is it their concern? Other than they don't have a sense of humor and they want to take things out of context and twist and turn. And by the way, it ain't going to help O'Reilly here. He still has a big, oh. he's got a zero, okay? He's, WFTL does not show in the rating book. Here's the book right here. It, it doesn't show it, which means that in no day part, at no time during the day, they have more than 100 people listening. They have no measurable audience. Norm, you could go out on the street corner and do your 8 to 9 hour, Norm, if he's in town, and uh, just get a megaphone and save all the juice. Yeah. Save all that electricity. FPL would be upset because it would cut down a bill, but you could just save all electricity. You just get a megaphone, get on a busy street corner. That would be a great idea. In fact, why not just go up to uh, Heather's house and stand on the street corner with a big megaphone? Heather's a bitch! You know, something like that. Although Heather may be very nice, like the guy said, she's hot. And still could be a bitch. Twelve minutes after 11 at 560 WQM. Here's something that's really hot now. Only man, people are buying it all over town and popping it in their puss. You can almost hear the sound of the... Uh, things, the capsules going down their throats. Oleum and Mediterranean formulas are advanced combinations of pharmaceutical grade olive oil combined with vitamins, minerals, herbals, other nutrients scientifically designed to provide natural nutrition solutions to help support specific health needs in your body. Look for their great three new products. They got one to help you sleep, one for weight management, and CoQ10, all using the benefits of the best olive oil that you'll find anywhere. Oleumed is a great product that's available at Publix, Eckerd's, Walgreens. If you want to get more information, call Oleumed at 1-866-Oleumed. That's 1-866-653-6633. You can also order their products online if you prefer at oleomedamerica.com. And keep in mind, if you uh, go to your nearest Publix and buy an Oleomed product in Dater Broward, you can get you a coupon, which is good for a free Larry Coker bobblehead doll. Oh, 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 oh. While supplies last. Don't forget to visit their sampling pavilion at Sportstown every Sunday, too, when the Finns are playing at home. Pick up free Oleomed samples and product information. Improve your health. Make your body into something almost worthwhile by popping Oleomed in your puss today. Sports Radio 560, QAM. Friday, you bastard. They want us to find a way to reimburse them for back pay from 200 years ago when they were slaves. When I only have a mobile home. A pit bull and a pinch of skull. So if you wanna ask me how, here's what I gotta say. You've got to kiss a nigger good morning. And tell him that you're sorry for enslaving them all. Kiss a nigger good morning. And that for everybody who is dead and gone. If I was born in 1802, owning slaves ain't something I'd do. No, no, but what were dead people did to you? I have to take the blame. Would you settle for an old Pontiac? No. With a can of smelly cherry and back. Instead of 40 acres and a mule, I have a better way. You've got to. Kiss a nigger good morning 
And one on Halle Berry, Morgan Freeman, too. It's a nigger good morning. Okay. And that's your restitution for enslaving you. It's a nigger good morning. Are you? And tell them that you're sorry for enslaving them all. You got it's a nigger good morning. That for everybody who is dead and gone. Poor Heather, she just don't get it. And, you know, even if she did get it, it wouldn't make any difference because, you know, they started out with the purpose of, you know, you start at point A and you're going to get to point C, and what, it doesn't make any difference what happens in between. Uh, you're still going to wind up at the same place. You, just, you see what I'm saying? So the purpose of doing the story was to make us look like a bunch of uh, racist, Klansmen, hoodwear, and whatever. Thanks for the publicity, by the way, Heather. We can use it. Nice uh, birthday cards pouring in here by the twos and threes. Look at this one. It's got all these uh, things in here. This uh, lady, Michelle, has been listening since 1978. How do you like that? So thanks for all the birthday cards. Of course, there's no money in any of them, but... You don't need any money. You're making all that money. That's what you think. You guys don't know Mitch Hirsch. 383 votes on the poll. How's Mo doing? He's starting to move up a little bit. What about in the last 25 years has had the greatest negative impact on South Florida? Mo Howard comes to town nine. Started out very late on this poll, but he's starting to move up a little bit. He's up to nine. In fact, it's just changing again. One moment, please. Oh, 12. Hoo-hoo-hoo. Making a late run. One of those strong closers in the stretch. Liberty City Riots, 15. Aileon, 25. Hurricane Andrew, 38. I would have thought Hurricane Andrew would have had more votes. It's too long ago. People are already forgetting. We just got through with the 10th anniversary. We just had like 80 billion uh, hours of coverage on it. That's true. And it sure changed the uh, face of this town in so many ways. None of them good. Alien 25, Hurricane Andrew 38. The 2000 Hanging Chad election, 107. And the Mariel Boatlift, 197. 50% said the Mariel Boatlift was a... And it was. You could drive... At that time, I was working at W. Snooze back in 80. Down on Ludlam and Dixie. And as you drove home up Dixie Highway, depending on where you live, but in my case, I guess it was up the old Hershey Highway. The Ho Chi Minh Trail is what you used to call it. Uh, you know, there would be like, here's a car over here, there's a dead body, and uh, this one, uh, I, I'm, I'm not exaggerating, there were a couple of nights I drove home and there were like cars off to the side of the road after there was like uh, some incidents, you know? And then the uh, convenience store that was right across from the uh, old beauty parlor that our station was located in, formerly a beauty parlor. We didn't have any beauties working in there, though. Oh, I think that place could have been uglier than here. But anyway, uh, that place was getting held up like every, well, at least once a week. After the Mariel boat lift. The courageous fleet, a fleetum flotilla. See, I hate to break the news to you, boys and girls. It's got nothing to do with bigotry. That's not the way to do uh, immigration policy, okay? We learned the hard way. Well, we didn't learn the hard way. And this thing that went on with the Haitians, you know, as much as I realize that they're being discriminated against, and it's a grotesque racist policy, which it is, and that this secret George W. Bush policy that they sneaked through there just last December, which they don't want to talk about or tell anybody where it came from, that says that they got special treatment. See, the Cubans got special treatment on one side. They got special good treatment, the wet foot, dry foot. You can get here, you can stay, regardless of anything. And also the Chinese. Of course, it's a long swim, you know, for the Chinese. But uh, And the Haitians, we got a special deal for you, but it's on the other side of the deal. See, you get the raw deal. We're going to stick you in some detention camp as long as we feel like it. And then maybe if, we're, if you look real nice at us and give us some free, uh, tightly sewn baseballs, then maybe... We'll give you a political asylum here and then sip your ass back. Yeah, that's the way it works. But you got to get control of it, and I'll say it again. The fact that this community isn't up in arms, that people aren't, like, jumping off of tall buildings over the inability of the Coast Guard. The ship came in to a uh, ship, the boat, the rickety boat, comes in two miles from the goddamn Coast Guard. Man, what is that all about? And it all depends on who you believe. If they were tracing them all the way and they let them get this close. And see, the rationale was, oh, well, we were afraid if we uh, interdicted them and stopped them, we'd have a lot of drownings at sea. Right. So well. There was at least some incident that happened before. That right. Capsized that's right. And well. Blah, blah, blah. So is that the new policy? In other words, the message that goes out, if you can get close enough to come in here, then we'll just we'll let you come because we don't want you to drown. That's a beautiful message to send out. And then if the other stories are true, that uh, they caught them off guard. Uh, and they just slipped through. That says a hell of a thing about Homeland Security. Makes me want to go home and just hump my Tom Ridge blow, uh, blow up doll. Hump something. Look at that. Mo's up to 13 votes already. I'm confident he's going to start moving up in the pack. I could be wrong about that. Never sell him short. Except with that bag. Oh. Here's uh, Fort Myers. Hello. Hey, Neil. 
Bill. Long time no talk. How you doing? I really uh, miss you. I live on Sanibel, so the only way I can get you is if I stand on the tallest building with a coat hanger. Good idea. Hey, that company really screwed us, the Beasleys, by taking us off that 770. You know, we had at least 20, 30 people listening over there. You were definitely the, the only show that ever had any listeners consistently. That I'm sure about. Yeah. Hey, the reason why I called is, you know, like I said, I don't get to listen very often, but you, you've talked about the debates, I can imagine, up in Central Florida. Yeah. I, I, something really struck me as funny is when, uh, uh, at the very end, when Russert asked them what they most admire about each other, mm -hmm. and, and Bill McBride pauses and he says, well, I, I admire his mother. <laughs> Martha Washington. Yeah. And, yeah. And and uh, uh, you know Jeff followed it off with a big grin, and he admired uh, McBride's um, uh, war record. So you know it was it was just a typical Bush di diverging from the uh, from the facts. By the way, speaking of war record and talking about a dirty campaign, how do you like this thing for the Senate race in Georgia? Max Cleland, who's a triple amputee, he lost two legs and an arm. He, he volunteered for the uh, service in Vietnam, lost two legs and an arm, and his opponent, his Republican opponent, says he's unpatriotic. <laughs> yeah. How do you like yeah. that? Well, what's that make me, then? See, if he really would have been patriotic, he'd lost the other arm, too. Right. What does it make you, exactly. communista, baby, communista? Yeah, okay. Have a great day. Well, I miss you. Bye. See you. There's a communist. Now, here's a card from uh, Richard McVeigh, our old buddy from Fl uh, Flamingo Records. I sure hope he's going to send me my planner for 2003. Do you know how important those things are to me? The what? The planner? Don't you know what that is? Planner book, little little book for the year. It's got the like the day. Don't you understand what that is? Well, in your case, a guy that loses a hundred dollar bill after uh, not after striking out at Treasure Island. Oh, the planner. The planner. The planner. What I did thought you it was like a planter. In my planter. Yeah. Uh -huh. Maybe you're a gardener. <clears throat> My 2003 planner, I need that badly. And Richard McVeigh always sends me one every year. So come on back, Dick. But he evidently is in Amsterdam. Figures he's a pervert. And here's a picture of the beautiful Sea Palace Chinese restaurant. And it's, um, I can't think of the name of that road, but like, uh, if, you, if you're driving out to the airport in a cab or in a car or in a uh, pop-up pop uh, toaster, uh, you go buy this thing. I've seen it a million times. Of course, the way to go to the airport is really on the train from Central Station. Just a little, uh, it only took me like 10 years to figure that out. Seriously, I'm, I'm a moron. I, I admit it, I'm a schmuck. I'm a real putz. Do you realize that until two years ago, I've been going to Amsterdam and all over Europe for like 15 years. Until two years ago, I never went on the tram once because I didn't know how it worked. No, no, seriously, I didn't know how what you had to do to get on there. I don't want to be like a moron, you know. I didn't have my stripping card. And you don't have to have your stripping card. You can actually uh, pay for it right on the tram, which pisses everybody else off because they don't want to stand behind you, you know, while you're getting your euros out. I think i got a stripping card right in my uh, wallet right now. Anybody in the audience want to see my stripping card? I bet you Carlos would be excited to see it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't have one. Yeah, I do. Here you go. No, I need it. Do I have it? No, don't have it. Uh, yeah, no, no. Yeah. Don't have one in there. i got them at home in my little sack. It's just like a little, like a little card. And they got like blank spaces. And every time you go on there, they ask you how, depending on how far you're going, it's usually two spaces. It's one zone, in zona. And they stamp the thing, and that's it. And it's good for, I think, like an hour, hour and a half, something like that. Got it? Got it. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is I'm a schmuck. And anyway, I've never been to this place, but boy, it sure is a beautiful place. So thanks a lot for the postcard from Amsterdam. Make me feel real bad about being here, Dick. But I'll be out of here pretty soon. <laughs> I'll be out of here real soon. Bye, Ma. Oh, yeah, I haven't told her yet because you know, I'm only 60 years old on Tuesday, and i got to answer to her. You know, that, that whole business about nosy mothers. Like, i got to answer to her. Can you See, you're, well, you'll, you'll find out when you get to be 60, 70, whatever, if, if your mother is still around. Is your mother still around? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, see, I'm, see it could have been very embarrassing. He could have said, oh, too. my mom died five years ago. Yeah, you're oh, still answering now? Forget about this. 20, 30, 40 years ago, she'll still be giving you the same crap. About be sure to put on your goulashes and don't do this and don't go running around too much and don't do that. Oh, jeez. I'm out of here soon, Ma. Soon. Out of this rat-infested, grotesque death knell place. Man. Even a cockroach. You notice? It's a good thing, too, because we had the everybody worried about West Nile virus. I noticed that when I came back here, all the mosquitoes left town, too. They couldn't handle it here anymore. They went to infect people elsewhere. 421 votes, and Mo is moving into fifth place. <laughs>
Let's hear it for the Mulbaster, baby. Because he is amazing. It's always fun when we put him on the poll because he just uh, shocks the hell out of you when you think he's got no chance. I'm getting pounded. Yeah, looks like it. 27 past 11 at 560 WQAM. Speaking of pounding, if that's what's happening on your mattress like at Miguel's house. By the way, before what we had on the wall was uh, Clarence came in and said he was raping somebody. I don't want to say who he said he was raping. Okay, because that would be. I'm getting pounded. But nevertheless, that was the banging against the wall. And I offered him to let him use our big black uh, device here, but he said, next time. He said, now that I loosened him up a little bit, maybe next time. Oh, sorry, Heather, I'm sorry for your tender ears. We've been only saying things like that. She's probably listening right now. She's probably a big fan of the show. Don't want to admit it, okay? Everybody loves Heather from Fox News. We'll make you a star, honey. That fucking bitch. Yeah, Flea Bailey, he'll make you a star, too. If you want to get you a new mattress for all the pounding, whatever else you're going to be doing, hopefully a lot of sleeping as well, then call our good friends at Dial a Mattress, 1-800-MATTRESS. They give you so much more than just great service. They give you a choice, all the top manufacturers in the world. And I should know because I've been buying my mattresses from these people for about 300 years. <clears throat> they got Serta and Sealy, Simmons, King, Coil. No store, no bedding store, no department store can match their selection, or especially their exceptionally low everyday prices. And as far as delivery is concerned, almost nobody anywhere delivers like they do. They let you choose the day of the week, any day, seven days, in a two-hour window, like noon to two, one to three, two fourteen to four fourteen, when it's convenient for you, and they actually show up on time. They take away the crappy old bedding, set up your brand new one, and you'll be sleeping like a baby for years to come. And they give you that 30-day in-home comfort guarantee to let you try it out the right way by sleeping on it, instead of like lying down on a filthy piece of plastic for 30 seconds. So pick up the phone and call Dollar Mattress right now. They'll be there in no time at all. They deliver everything they say they do. 1-800-MATTRESS, 1-800-M-A-T-T-R-E-S. Be sure and tell them old Neil told you to call or check them out on their website, mattress.com. Live, live and local, we are Sports Radio 560 QAM. Hey, you bastards. Welcome back to the glittering pageantry of the Mohawk and David Show. We have a full docket today. <laughs> including the cavalcade of articulate athlete interviews. You know that pipe smoke is still at it. What? 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 Singing those songs, making fun of me. They make fun of me all the time. I don't know why they don't adore me. Yeah, yeah, everything will be all right, Mo. Get your hands off me, you fairy. You queer, you tube chomper. Real men don't touch, only during the game. Yes, master. They want singing. I'll give them singing. Get on a piano. Over there. Okay, Mo. Now, hit it. Back in my day, men were straight. Being gay is hip today. That's why I can't tolerate his guzzling gays. Sport holes weren't gay back You moron. What's the matter, Mo? My wig fell off again. Okay. All right, where were we? Sport holes were in gay. Uh, I'll take it from here. The guys that like to worship men. Good, Good thing, thing we, we won't see Paul Lindor wailing and Adam again. again. Didn't need to soothe prostate. Or to tickle Harry Taint. Jesus Christ, I really hate Jizz Guzzling Gang. 26 till noon at 560. That wasn't Matt Drudge that called before. Somebody tells Carlos off the air that it was Matt Drudge. They would bet their life on it. Well, guess what? It's the end of your life. That wasn't Matt Drudge, was it? He loves this show. He loves me. And, of course, Lynn Samuels would probably beat him with a, well, maybe that's what he hopes, whip him to pieces, you know, if he did that. The caller that was screaming about how many House Negroes did Clinton have. Well, what does that have to do with anything anyway? See, it's, that's always the tactic. You know, divert, divert, divert. Well, what does that have to do with George W.? Clinton ain't in there anymore. But they just love beating up on him because they're jealous. He was getting more action than they are. And, of course, in, uh, well, Matt Drudge's case, I think Andy Sullivan maybe turned Matt down. That's why he's been out of shape today. 441 votes. What event in the last 25 years has had the greatest negative impact on South Florida? Liberty City riot 17. Mo Howard David coming to town 23. He's about to pass Alien, like he's standing, like he's uh, floating still. Mo Howard David 23, Alien 27. See how close that's getting. Hurricane Andrew 43. 2000 hanging chat election 113, and the Muriel boat lift 218. 
218 people in this poll today said that the Marielle Boatlift <laughs> had the greatest impact of anything in the last 25 years in this town. Of course, if we ask for the greatest positive impact, it would certainly have to be that wonderful weekend a couple of weekends ago when uh, Hurricanes beat FSU and when the uh, Dolphins beat Denver. And we found out we were so blessed. Of course. Blessed briefly, though. See, because even the Lord's blessings don't last forever. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the ATT uh, whatever it is, ATT line. Here's Boca. Hello. How you doing, Neil? Okay. Hey, uh, while we're on the topic of uh, Fox News, I was reading in uh, Michael Moore's book, Stupid White Men. Uh-huh. Uh huh. The night. Of oh wait, wait, wait! Stupid. Oh yeah, Stupid White Men's Michael uh, Moore's book, right? Yeah. Yeah. The uh, the night of the 2000 election, when all, there was all the confusion of uh, who who won, right. uh, a decision was made by uh, the the man in charge at the Fox News Channel to go out first and say that uh, Bush won. Well, the man in charge who made this decision was John Ellis. Now, who's John Ellis? He's the first cousin of George W. and Jeb Bush. How do you like that? Yeah, so I just wanted to pass that along. Was I was... <laughs> exactly. More drama. I guess you didn't see John Gibson last night either, huh? No, I didn't. I don't watch that. Crap. Isn't that pretty embarrassing that uh, they did a 10-minute segment with this big thing they're trying to whip up about uh, not much to do about nothing on this show, and one person saw it in the whole audience? Well, it's not... Uh... Fox News is George Bush's network, so. Exactly. There you go. It's not our crowd. Thanks a lot. All right. See ya. Who do you like better, John Ellis or Shirley Ellis, the name game? Huh? Now, what, what is that under, the name game? Oh, it's under Ebonics name game is what it's under, you know? Yeah. Always liked Shirley Ellis, man. And old Doc Ellis, too. Come on, everybody. Yo, look here, man. We gonna play a game. Say what? We be flipping spits that round. Be the name. Yo, what you talking about? You take a funky dope word. Jack and bust some skills to make it right. Gotta bust some skills. Check out what I've been kicking. What you talking about? You have it down in no time. Show up. Skeezer. Skeezer, skeezer, for skeezer, for nana, for skeezer, skeezer, for skeezer. Skeezer. Let me do homie. Homie, homie, for bony, for nana, for nana, for bony, skeezer, for bony. Homie. Yo. This be Anthony. Anthony, 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 Just tied Alien. Oh. <laughs> He's moving up. He's moving up with lightning speed. Even Ricky never ran that fast. 22 till noon at 560 QM. We got the Mad Dog at 1. Let me take a look at that schedule here. Hank at 3. I was going to say with a clean slate, but uh, we got the uh, Dave Wanstead show in there. 5, 530 to 6. The Bacardi Dave Wanstead show between <laughs> 530 and 630. 7 o'clock, it's, uh, what is it? Hooters College football preview with Clarence, who's going to be telling you about his exciting sexual experience this morning with uh, Mo. Josh Dero, Joe, Mo, and uh, D, uh, Don Bailey Jr. I love that promo that we got where Don Bailey Jr. comes in. Hey, I'm Don Bailey Jr. And I'm Joe Zagacki. You know, it's just, uh, Joe, it's not personal. You're a good guy, but God, are you boring. Eddie K from GA at 10 o'clock tonight and ESPN Radio, which really sucks with a bunch of, and I gotta take issue with Mad Dog. I heard him one day the other day, a few days ago, talking about Tony Bruno. And how entertaining he is on the Tony Bruno is an asshole, man. He's the biggest laughing hyena. I would have fake ho 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 ho. Sound like Santa Claus in drag. Tony Bruno, my ass, mad dog. Of course, he also likes Greta von Sustern, Greta von Brown, and his new girlfriend. But I can't think of her name anymore. The one on CBS. Oh yeah, Christiana Amanpour. She's lovely. My and local. This is Sports Radio 560. Q A Q A M. David's a bitch. He plays a cat and mouse game with the police. Sniper man, sniper man, unfriendly neighborhood sniper man. When we catch him, he will fall. 
hang him up by the hair of his paws on the lookout for that sniper man. Sniper man, sniper man, gonna get ya, sniper man. On your ass, Charlie Moose, you'll have your testicles in a noose. Look out, where is the sniper man? Chief Moose, to the person who left us a message, you gave us a telephone number. We do want to talk to you. Call us at the number you provided. Public dialogue continued. The person you called could not hear everything that you said. Call us back so that we can clearly understand. We want to get it right. Is he sneaky? Listen, bud. He's only out for the spill of blood. When the case is finally cracked, we'll put a vice on his scrotal sack. Look out. Where is the sniper man now? Look everywhere we can now. Where is the sniper man? 16 till noon at 560 WQM. So here, uh, Troy Stratford just brings this into me, who happens to be very black, by the way, with a bald head, and don't find the show in the least bit racist. But at any rate, here's an email that somebody sent to my good friend Steve Wolf, who's the PR man at Pompano Park, one of our fine sponsors on the show. See, this is always part of the game. You know, this is part of the game plan at Fox. We're going to get that son of a bitch off the air. Not because they think I'm really a racist, but because of the fact they don't like the liberal rap that goes on on this show. That's what it's all about. They don't want anybody on the air except, uh, I guess basically except their right-wingers. They have the other people on there just for window dressing, you know, like Alan Combs, who's as weak. He, he's as weak as a piece of limp spaghetti. He's just there as a foil for Sean Hannity. But at any rate, uh, I won't even use the guy's name on the air because he's not a public figure, although we could gladly make him one. One of the patrons of Pompano Park says, I'll go to other racetracks as long as you're a sponsor of Neil Rogers' radio show. He's a racist and owes an apology to Condoleezza Rice and other blacks of accomplishment. Well, there are many blacks of accomplishment. In fact, one of the people I was quoting when my conversation yesterday was Harry Belafonte, who looks kind of black to me. I have nothing against Harry. In fact, uh, when I was a kid, I actually had the Banana Boat song. They go, all of that stuff, you know. Oh, so Harry's okay. At any rate, the, the response from Steve Wolf is, Dear Mr. So-and-so, although we at Pompano Park don't always agree with Neil's opinion, we do believe in free speech. Neil treats everyone the same, and if everybody thought he was a racist, this show would not have been on the air for the past 25 years, and he wouldn't have the number one radio talk show in South Florida. Pompano Park is proud to be a sponsor of Neil's show since the day he started, and we will continue to do so. If he really offends you, then please turn to another channel. I hope you'll continue to be a patron of Pompano Park, despite our disagreements on radio talk show hosts. Oh! Nice going there, Steve. I always knew you had it in you. Well, I hoped you did. Wasn't too sure. There you go, Steve Wolf at Pompano Park. So you can try all the old games. And like I said, they're not even in the market. What they're trying to do is stir up a bunch of crap from outside. Let's silence all the other voices. All we can have on a year in America now is G. Gordon Liddy, Rush Limbaugh, Bill, uh, don't confuse me with the facts, O'Reilly, uh, Ali North, and that's it. Oh, and Alan Key, speaking of dark folks, right, uh, one token right-wing dark guy who is not a man of accomplishment. Anybody seen him, uh, him on MSNBC lately? No. No. See, there are dark folks who are good dark folks, and then there's dark folks who are bad dark folks, like, for example, Clarence Token Thomas and uh, Watt. What was his first name? J.T. Watt. J.C. J.C. Well, all those jocks, they got the initials, you know, all those ex-jocks from Oklahoma. J.C. Watt. What? He ain't in there no more. He finally got out. Very sad. In fact, as you look, if you want to take a look at the members of... I don't want to go through the whole thing. not even worth it. Not even worth responding to, okay? Uh, arrested by the tram police in Amsterdam? i, I got to get to that call. Hello? Hey, Neil. How you doing? Pretty good. Yeah, I lived in Lights of Plain a couple years ago, and I when I first moved there, it was so funny. It was near the Rijksmuseum. I got on the tram out of Lights of Plain, and I wasn't really sure how to use those tickets you were talking about. Right. And I, I didn't buy one. And mm -hmm. I was just... Uh -oh. uh, did you ever get on the tram when, like, five or six of those red coats would come on storming twice, the people? Twice. All of, the, oh, they, they all the thousands of times that I've used the tram over there, twice I've been on there. Of course, I'm always a good guy. You know, I, I wish the, the ones that are like, um, I, the, 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 some are conductor trams where they actually, most of them are conductor trams where you have to give it to the conductor to stamp it. And then they have some of the others, like number uh, 16 and 24, where you have to fold over your tr stiff and guard, yeah. stick it in the machine and stamp it yourself. So if you really don't know the lay of the land, it's very easy to do that. But twice I've been on there, and the guys in the coats came on, and they all of a sudden they come out of nowhere, it seems like. I think they come out of nowhere, yeah. exactly. And it was very, it was right on the spot, 100 guilders. Yeah. You know, I mean, boom, you're, and I was ridiculed, and I felt like an idiot. And there, was, there, was there, was a young, there was a young couple, last time I saw that happen this summer, I guess it was, there was a young couple who had their dog on there with them on the tram. 
and the guy came by, and they were like, uh, they were trying to like walk off. He said, ah, no, so, uh, then they blocked their way, like no chance, you know. No, they and have they, to. They have and they said, well, let, we'll let the dog go this time. In other <laughs> words, they didn't find the dog, but they find them, and they made him pay before they let him off the tram. And regarding the racism thing, and listening just briefly, uh, you know, people mix opinion with racism. You're, you're, you're just, you're talking opinion. You're, you're spouting your opinion. It's, it's far from racism. Yeah. We, we live in such a homogenized, vanilla society here in America now. And, you know, when you live over there, you get a real good understanding of why you don't want to live here anymore. We don't have too many vanilla cheeks here, though. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> have a great day, pal. Likewise. See you on the uh, Rumber plane. On something. So there's a guy that got, uh, that's very rare because you don't see them that often. They don't come out of the, uh, the tram police. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon Wireless line. Rolling along, singing a song. I already got one protest there to Pompano Park. I got news for us here, okay? I'm not even going to say it. He's going to go to another track. Is this guy going to go to another? No. He'll go to another harness track. Is there another harness track in town? No. No, there's not. He'll be at Pompano Park. In fact, he'll be there, I will guarantee, with bells on, plunging his brains out. Probably gambling away the goddamn lunch money. Five six seven oh five sixty. Let's go to uh, Miami. Hello. Hey Neil. Yes sir. Hey, I was calling uh, also about um, that that caller that uh, asked who Clinton's house Negro was. Yeah. That that sounded like Matt Drudge to me. Did it? Sure did. Well, why, why would he? he, be, he why why, why would he? Yeah, he's a big fan of mine. Why would he do that? Uh, I don't know. Maybe he uh, maybe felt he could call up and you wouldn't recognize his voice. That's right. the, Listen, it, forget about the voice. I didn't recognize him when he walked in here a couple of weeks ago. He was here with Lynn Samuels, and I, he says, oh, I'm just the driver today. I thought it was your limo driver. I didn't, I did seen, he have his hat on? No. I've seen the guy only twice in my life, okay, like I'm going to recognize him. <clears throat> uh, the other thing I was calling about was after that woman called yesterday, uh, yeah. Heather. Yes. Heather the bitch. Uh-huh. Um, I went on Google and did a search uh, to see, because she said it was like uh, a lot of people were upset. And I figured uh, there'd be a lot of news stories about this. Right. I found one news story. You know where it was? Newsmax. Yeah, Newsmax. Which that, is not like a real, uh, it's uh, it's like a right-wing thing. Yeah, it's a know? right-wing piece of crap. It's, and it's and the, only, the only other person that wrote about it on the Internet that I found was Andrew Sullivan, that self-hating queen who who didn't put my name in. You know, the, well, the host who happens <laughs> to be white, you know, whatever. So uh, it's, 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 it's uh, this, you, know, you know what this is. This is uh, ratings month. Yeah. They're trying to start crap up. Well, it ain't going to help them, I'll guarantee you. When, when you got your main man, when you got your number one guy, Bill O'Reilly, on here in this market, and he's got a zero, no measurable audience, uh, it ain't going to work here. So I say, say no to uh, Fox News. Just say no. And head of the bitch. Okay, see you. Bye. How do you like that, Heather? You're making a tremendous impact here. Now, we've been on almost three hours today. We had one person, one nice lady, who saw it yesterday, John uh, Gibson. See, when I turn him on, I immediately think all those ugly OJ days, on and on, and I immediately flip off. I flip him off, and that's it. And evidently, a lot of other people do as well. I do like that guy in the morning, though, on CNN. I can't stand Paula. She makes me nauseous. She makes me want a duty in my pants. But what's the guy's name again? I wrote it down here somewhere. I'll never find it. You know, the, the crusty guy they got on there, Jack uh, something. Jack off. Whatever his name is. He's a panic. And he, this morning, was going off on it. <laughs> on, it was incredible. Harvey Pitt. It was sensational. By the way, anybody remember Pitts and Lee? No. Here's a uh, lady from Pember Pines. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Neil. How are you? One of the long-time listeners, first-time caller, wanted to tell you happy 60th for you on Tuesday. Thank you. And, yeah, Heather is a bitch. Yeah. Because, I mean, just trying to make you look and trying to make everybody look bad. And, and then, then I love this thing they do, and, of course, they're probably trying to, you know, suck me into a big uh, thing about it, which I'm not going to do. I've been around yeah. too long for that. But they got to put my picture on here and then show the building, the station, everything. And here's a guy that's a racist, and they twist it all out of uh, proportion, you know. But I'm um, to hell with them, you know. Yeah, to hell with them. That's true. Also... You had that piece about the N-word. I'm female and I'm black, and it doesn't offend me. So a lot of those other black people out there who get offended by it, they need to get over it. It's well, the I, word that they I, I, We've been playing that for months. We've never had anybody of any color say that they were offended by it. I ever. find it hilarious, Yeah. and I enjoy it. So keep up the good work. Thanks yeah. a lot. Have a great All day. Right. Bye -bye. Uh -huh. See, there's a nice black lady. She's not offended by it. You want to know why? Because unlike the people at Fox, not just Heather, but the, all the people at Fox, they don't have a sense of humor. Because the people at Fox take it all very seriously. Because they're there to change the world. Not for the better, just for the return to the right. As far to the right as they can turn us. You may be fooling a lot of people out there, but evidently not too many in this audience. I'll tell you that, Heather. But it is November sweeps coming up, so I guess they're trying to, like, again, siphon the audience off of this show. I'll make a big, make a big thing about it. That's my comment, okay?
That's my response, Heather. And as far as John Gibson's concerned, man, that, is that real hair of his, that red uh, thing that's on his head? Pretty weak. Okay, almost rivals Aaron Brown's, but not as bad. Here's Miami. Hello. Miami. Hello? Yes, sir. Hello, hello, Neil. How you doing? Okay, going to be, I think, a short Hey, what's yes. up? This is, this is a nigga who, who loves the show. Yes? Yeah, um, I saw that show yesterday. Yeah, oh, you you saw what show? The show with, uh, with Gibson. Oh, and John Gibson, you're the one. Yeah. yeah. I, it was an accident, by the way, because I was just turning my TV on. <laughs> yeah. But, um, they had a, they also had you as one of the top 25 DJs of all time. Uh huh. Which I was really ha glad so, to hear. So, so in other words, it wasn't all bad. No, they just, they just threw one little slip, one little slip thing in there, you know, that was good. <laughs> nah, well, nothing's perfect. Yeah, well, you know, this is, um, the right wing, um, you know, they, they want to shut everybody up, you know. Well, if you don't, don't agree with them, they're gonna, they're gonna, um, offend you, you know, they're gonna try to get to you. Don't forget, vote three or four times just to spite them on Tuesday. Right on, right okay. on. Okay, okay, see you, nigger. Bye. Bye. <laughs> see, there's one of my nigger friends. I mean, and that's, see, we've been doing it on this show, and that's another thing, when you come in from the outside and you pretend you know something, because you read a bunch of crap on some stupid ass website. So the guy that called before and said that that was Matt Drudge also claimed that Matt Drudge was the one that put Newsmax.com up to that whole thing in the first place? Is that what the guy told you? Yep. See, I would never dream that because my close friend Lynn Samuels is like this with Matt Drudge, and he follows her around like a little puppy dog. And I would I would be very hard-pressed to believe that. Although it's possible, maybe Matt's trying to whip up a little controversy. Maybe he didn't get a trick or a treat on Halloween last night. I don't know what his deal is. I don't know. Five, and I really don't care. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line on a tremendous Friday. You can feel it. You can smell it. It's in the air, baby. Must be that big game coming up Monday night. Here's Palm Beach. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, sir. I just want to thank you very much for uh, getting that nasty Nazi puke bag bitch straight from Fox. And you notice the first thing she did, she started with the uh, the name calling. She tried to give you that label. Yeah. The uh, the liberal. The when liberal. you call yourself that, when, when did I ever come on here and say I'm the voice of the great liberals? When did I ever say that? Exactly. And what if you were? And uh, right away, the same thing they did that with Tom Daschle. He was the obstructionist. Mm -hmm. And then Al Gore, he wore a blue suit one day, and he was reinventing himself. Yeah. And it's the liberal media. And, and all you... Uh, and by the way, who's ever, who's ever been more critical of Al Gore than I've been, by the way? So this bull crap, <laughs> like I'm every... Uh, they, they have no idea what they're talking about. Well, it's just anyone who disagrees with them, or God forbid you should have your own opinion, uh, you're, uh, you're against them. Mm -hmm. They say you're with us, you're against us, and what that means, if you don't share their view, you're against them. You're the enemy. And I thought this, this guy in the White House was supposed to be the uniter, oh, not yeah. the divider. Compassionate conservatism, right. He's divided this, this country. He's declared war on Democrats. As a matter, of, as a matter of fact, a you're right. Supposedly after 9-11, you remember all those hearts and flowers things the media kept saying about, oh, we've never seen the country so united. Take a look at all the polls right now, and they keep saying about the election on Tuesday is split like right down the middle. It's like fitty-fitty. You know, it's like it, just there's like a straight line dividing the country, not geographically, but politically, right down the middle. And another thing, too, though, on the Palm Beach Post, they in the front page, they have a big color picture of uh, Giuliani with Jeb Bush. Yeah. And uh, I've about had it with Giuliani, too. They keep making this guy out to be a hero. Hero, my ass. He yeah. stood there and he gave directions is all he did. The people were the heroes were the firemen who were going up the stairs while the people were coming down the stairs. Well, don't Those say, were don't say it too loud. He'll come down here and close all the bars down. Now, he didn't do crap, Giuliani. Yeah. They all, oh, Giuliani, well, he, <laughs> he didn't do anything. What the hell did he do? He said, yeah, go left down Broad Street, make a left. That's all he did was give direction. But he did wear a mean face mask. And as far as Homeland Security goes, I mean, we couldn't even keep out El Duque. Amen. Thank you. Neil. Or Mo Howard. Have a great day. <laughs> yeah, I'll say one thing. He wore a better face mask than Johnny Bauer. Who didn't wear one? Old Johnny. Oh. Let's suit him up. What do you say, Pat Quinn? Let's get Johnny Bauer. Can't be any worse than what we got. My and local. This is Sports Radio 560. QAM. Hello, it be the 12 to 1 hour on WQAM. Tell me why, why, why do spooks have gold teeth? No, no, no. Does it help them to chomp on the food that they eat? What's that do when they chew? Oh, why do spooks have gold teeth? Tell me why some black guys have the shape of a star, golden caps for a heart. On their teeth, where they touch, have no clue of confusion. Oh, why do spooks have gold teeth? Why do 
Those fools have gold teeth. Over the over the over Why do they show where their caps go? Do they rinse out their mouth with soap or brush? Show off their dental work as if we care. If I found out who their dentist was, I ain't going there. Oh, why? Tell me why. Why don't spooks blow their nose? Hear them snort in the store. As they walk past tissue rolls, no tissue in hell. Oh, why don't spooks blow their nose? Twelve oh three at five sixty. I'll tell you one thing, my good friend uh, Lynn Samuels. I'm going to have to have a long chat with her. I'll tell you that because evidently we just had another spy report off the air, Carlos. That Matt Drudge was on with Kid Curry. I mean, uh, Bishop Victor Curry. Yep. On that uh, dark complected radio station MBM and ripping me an ass and uh, claiming I'm doing this and I'm doing that and ripping dark folks. Now you just heard that bit, which we thought was hysterical myself. And why do dark folks have so many black teeth? But anyway, what is his problem, Matt Drudge? So evidently, the self-hating uh, thing that he is, whatever it is that he is, he's uh, so far off the deep end. I guess they must be getting really panicky between now and Tuesday. They must be uh, taking uh, doing some inside polling and realizing because this guy, you saw him when he, were you here the day he was here with uh, Lynn Samuels? No, I wasn't here that day. I mean, he was standing there against the wall laughing and puking, and this guy is a closet fan of this show like you wouldn't believe. That's right. So I'm going to have to get on the, uh, do a little email there with Lynn and see what the hell uh, is wrong with this guy. Like I said, maybe he uh, got cut off last night or something. I don't know. Maybe Andy Sullivan just kicked him out. Just amazing. Talk about much ado about nothing. And, of course, Bishop Curry, who hates me like poison anyway. Just get them all whipped up there, uh, Kid Cur Bishop Curry. I always like Kid Curry a lot better than Bishop Curry. Although I do like Korea a little bit. Got some good Indian restaurants in Toronto, eh? 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. The great Matt Drudge. <laughs> yeah. Who's like a little boy that some people take seriously and they actually put him on the radio. On WABC and a whole bunch of other stations too, Norm. Nationwide, Matt Drudge. The Drudge Report. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Here's South Miami. Hello. South Miami's gone? Uh-huh, it is now. Here's Palm Beach. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Eddie K. Ron for GA. What did he just say? Something about GA? Eddie K. runs with GA. Oh, oh great. Very good. Excellent call. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line. St. Paul, Minneapolis. Hello. Good morning, Neil. How are you doing? Okay. Pleasure speaking with you. It first, is. First time WAP caller. All right. Long time listener. We go way back before Zeta and the bird, you know, Mitch and his ponytail. All right. Sometimes I feel myself. Uh huh. Up in the Twin Cities, I'm hooked up on the internet, and so far, no Haitians to report up here yet. Damn it. So far, so good. Nah, but guess what? We got a couple of hundred we're going to send up there in a couple uh, of weeks. I'm looking forward to it, buddy. Nice and cool up here. I ought to make them real nice and comfortable, if you know what I mean. Right. Got a Larry Spy report for you. On Thursday night, uh, he had Heather Mills McCartney on there, and he, yeah, referred, he referred to her uh, three times as Heather Hills McCartney. <laughs> and by the time he was able to get it together, you could actually watch him stop his mouth. His eyes would move around like if his brain was trying to get it together, and he carefully put out the words, Mills McCartney, after he was getting it together. I, I've been doing this a long time. Yeah, maybe too long. <laughs> yeah. He, he must be falling apart because now Hannity and Sherlock Holmes are beating him on Fox, so he must be crumbling at the seams. He's in tough shape. He is. I don't see how, how he's going to make it much longer myself, but who knows? He's he, he, can, he can barely fill out the suspenders. Pretty soon they're going to start slipping off his uh, sloped shoulders. Well, shoot. You know, I mean, it's going, they look like two mountains on the side of a, of a, of a cavern there, yeah. you know? Uh, are, are you mourning at all the, the, the loss of Grandmaster Flash from Run DMC at all over there down in Miami? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and we're having quite a big uh, thing about that this weekend. I figured that all the, all the guys down there are going to be gathering and, and putting things up on the wall down there. They're just like when Lennon died back up in the 80s. Well, Neil, you know, as it stands, my brand muffin is kicking in. So, okay, you know, pal. you're going to have to get out of here. Happy birthday. Thanks. Love you. Hang in there. <laughs> Say hi to Jesse, too, and tell him to cut the crap. Jesse Ventura, that is, not the other Jesse. Oh, see, there you go again. Everything can be turned into a racial thing. If you want to read it, yeah, well, that, that's going to be our poll question. What the hell happened to Matt Drudge? What Did he go off the deep end or what? What is his story? 
Who was that? I I was I was on another call, but it wasn't Grandmaster Flash. It was Grandmaster J. Oh, excuse me, Grandmaster J. Well, what do I know? I know how to do a talk show. Okay, calm down. You owe me fifty dollars. Five six seven oh five sixty pound by uh what is it pound my what? Here's uh, Miami. Hello. Yeah, you know if, if Heather wants to do some real um, investigative journalism instead of l- looking at um, adult radio in Miami, my suggestion is that she take a look at um, Jeb Bush's activities when he was the campaign manager for Ross Layton, the point man to release Orlando Bosch, the Cuban terrorist who blew up an airplane full of people. Mm-hmm. Here we are in the day and age of terrorism, and uh, we're going to reelect the governor who, who 10 or 11 years ago said, hey, let's let terrorists out of jail. Not with my help. Well, I'll tell you what, buddy, I already voted, and I hope that that SOB, General Jeb, goes down just like his ancestor. And don't forget, vote again Tuesday. You're damn right I am. Okay, see you. He's whipped up to a frenzy, and that's good. See, uh, all you people out there trying to get everybody uh, whipped up, you're gonna, it's going to have like a backlash, baby, backlash. So, Mac Drudge, call back yet or what? Not yet. Five six seven oh five. Oh, he's too busy with Kid Curry. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty. We'll get a spy report on that or two or three. Eight minutes past noon. And by the way, the dark folks have no idea who he is anyway. Live and local. This, this is five sixty. The radio is all yours now. Q A M. Friday, you bastard. This is former vice president of the United States, Al Gore. I have recently poked my head out of the shadows of oblivion to take pot shots at the president. I have reappeared, much like Puxatawney Phil, the groundhog creature that reappears each year to determine whether or not we'll have an early spring. I wish it to be known that it was I who was responsible for saving the lives of those nine miners in Pennsylvania over the weekend. I had asked the media to keep my name out of it as not to appear a spotlight hog. However, I feel the American people have a right to know the truth. Here's what happened. Upon hearing of this unfortunate accident, I raced to the scene. I lowered myself into the mine using an old Ron Popeil pocket fisherman and some bailing wire. Down, down, down. Into the depths of darkness, I sank, never thinking of my own safety, but rather of the safety of those men on the ground. When I reached the miners, they said to me, Hey, you're the guy that invented the Internet, right? I said, Yes. We all had a Mike's Hard Lemonade, which I brought with me down into the hole, and then we sat around and reenacted the fart scene from Blazing Saddles. I thought you should know the truth. And now... Much like the groundhog creature pucks the tawny fill, I'll sink back into the darkness of oblivion until I am needed again. This is Al Gore, superhero. Superhero. It sounds kind of gay, the way he says that. 1213 at 560. I just sent an email to Lynn Samuels, and I told her to get a leash and a collar for her buddy Matt. Well, of course, these are just calls that are coming in from outside. First of all, I wouldn't recognize his voice if he called again six times in a row. That's number one. And number two, uh, we don't know if that's true or not. Maybe he is not with Kid Curry, uh, Bishop Curry. Right. Because there ain't nobody listening to it anyway. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T. But it's really interesting that just four days before the election, all this stuff is whipping up. These people are off there. They've gone off the deep end. So they must be really very nervous because the only thing of any consequence going on here is the Jebster man on Tuesday. Bill McBride, your next governor, and the Jebster. That's the only thing of uh, any real consequence. So they must be real nervous. Here's Miami. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. How are you doing now? Okay. Hey, I think I, I might have a spy report for you. Okay. Um, but I'm not sure about it. I have on a reliable source that the situation you're going through with Heather and what's happening in New York. Yeah. I have a friend in New York who says that a certain radio host, uh, morning show host down here, got all of that stuff started because he complained to his friends in New York that, you know, uh, the radio personality that I, down here was uh, hosting a racist radio show. Mm-hmm. 
and all of that stuff got passed around. Do you, you mean the host, do you mean the host who several months ago suggested that under the guise of shtick, I'm doing something that in a lot of other markets somebody would get a put a bullet through right. for? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And huh. so he, it, this is his way of getting back at you for the things that you're doing to him I down see. here. Well, it could be. So, yeah, I think that's where all your problems. Now, now where, where did you hear? Where did you hear this? Well, I have a friend that lives in New York, and and we and he and he called me and he told me about that website that you had mentioned the other day. Yeah, Newsmax.com. Yeah. Yeah, and he was saying that you know all of that got started from someone at the radio station down here. Uh huh. That, and and that's where he has powerful friends in the industry that could you know make make a problem for you. So oh speak. boy, so, I'm just crapping my so pants. Look no further than your own radio station for what's happening with that stuff. Okay, we'll take it under advisement, pal. Appreciate it. Thanks. See ya. Well, I mean, it's possible. That's crossed my mind. Who the hell knows? We don't sit here and, like, point the finger and make accusations and start putting out memos. But uh, something that crosses your mind, you know? Some people act a little wacky at times. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. See, there's a difference between on-air stick, speaking of people talk about stick, a difference between that and then making suggestions about putting bullet in somebody's head, things like that, things of that nature. But unfortunately, the people who run this radio station don't understand that. When that happened way back in March, April, whenever it was, at that point, that should have been nipped in the bud. See? But life goes on. Here's uh, Miami. Hello. Hey, Neil. How are you today? Okay. Good. I, I'm a first-time caller, and I must say uh, this show is fantastic. Uh, finally, someone that's shooting straight from the hip and telling the truth about this nonsense with, uh, with uh, everything that's going on in this country lately. Um, earlier you had uh, indicated, you know, how, how much of a split this country is coming up this election. And what I want to ask is how can half this country be so stupid at the moment and buying all this Republican nonsense? Yeah. I mean, uh, I think it was uh, a few days ago, you may have heard this, that uh, Canada issued a, uh, a travel warning to some of its citizens. Yeah, I have that here, as a matter of fact. I never got around to that story, but I do have it here, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're some of their uh, Middle Eastern uh, descent kind of people, yeah. Yes, it would be unwise to travel to the United States for fear of detainment or, you know, whatever, John Ashcroft. Right. Or maybe surgery right. on him or something. But you would think that the people of this country would realize that this is quite possibly one of the most undemocratic uh, regimes that we've had, I mean, since possibly the Second World War. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the old adage of uh, cooking the frog seems to apply here. If you uh, throw on the frog into a boiling water, it jumps out and feels it, but if you slowly turn the heat up, it doesn't notice, and you've got Yeah, good. that's a good point, yeah. Good but, parallel. Uh, uh, that's just what I wanted to bring up, and uh, just keep up the good work, and I'm going to continue to listen, and hopefully a lot more people will start to listen and uh, take your message to heart. Let's hope. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. Well, there's a lot of people who are just playing stupid, you know. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the 18th. That'd be our poll on Monday. Who do you think started all this crap? We'll put him on there, too, as a matter of fact. Mo, now that we got that. And like I said, I'm not making any accusations here, but that certainly has crossed my mind after that grotesque, unbelievable uh, comment that was made several months ago on this radio station. And, of course, the people that run this place, eh, you know. I guess there's somebody to get a free pass, maybe because they're, you know, advanced in age or whatever it might be. I don't know what the deal is. Maybe because there's a sympathy factor involved. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. Here's Kendall. Hello. This is Bino. Co yeah. Okay. Nice hearing from you, Bino. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Uh, hello. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, everyone's getting that DJ's name wrong from uh, Run DMC. Yeah. It's Jam Master J. Jam Master J. Well, Carlos had it wrong. He's the one that screwed us all up. Yeah, Jam Master J. He and I got a couple things to say about that Haitian thing. Uh, uh, first of all, it, it's not really an issue of not protected borders because they had footage of the boat when it was way out. That wasn't file footage of some other boat. They, uh, they had been watching it for a lot of miles. Uh -huh. And normally I'm the first one to cry conspiracy with the election thing, but uh, what you also got to look at is how do we know who organized the boat trip all the way back in Haiti? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Well, well, but what does that have to do with the way it's handled when it gets here? I'm, I mean, there's, there's certainly that possibility. The timing was strange. Yeah. Uh, I don't really know. I don't have too much of an opinion. I work with a lot of Haitian people at work in the kitchen. I work at a restaurant. Right. And they're all good, hard-working people. I don't know about everyone else back in their neighborhood, but uh, I think they should stay personally. Okay. Thanks a lot.
Yep, bye. 20 past noon at 560 WQM, 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T line. Well, we only got like 40 minutes left. i got to hurry. Don't give me a look like that. 525 votes on the poll. Which event in the last 25 years has had the greatest negative impact on South Florida? Liberty City riots, 19. Aileon, 29. Mo Howard David coming to town, 47. Hurricane Andrew, 56. He's moving right down the ass of the hurricane. 2000 hanging chat election, 127. Mariel Boatlift, 247. Marielitos, man. Not too thrilled by the way that whole thing was mishandled. I was going to say handled, mishandled. Oh, Amster, what, what is this? Tram story two from Amsterdam? Another one. Hello. North Hello, Miami. Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, happy free birthday. Thanks. Uh, yeah, tram story. Uh, getting to uh, Amsterdam, staying in Museum Plain, jumping to number 16, my first day there, me and my girlfriend. I have no idea how the thing works, so I think I could pay the driver. The driver says he doesn't have change. And I said, so what do I do? And he goes, that's your problem. If they arrest you, they arrest you. Just like that. The next day I go and get my strip in cotton, and uh, you just punch it. That's all you got to do. Right. Right. Uh, what, what were you? You were saying that you didn't know how to use it at all, or when you first got over there? Oh, when I the first, what do you mean first got over there? The first 10 years I was going there, I had no idea how, what I didn't know from a strip in cotton. I didn't know what to, to do, what to, et cetera. So I just right. Walked. You can, you can get on and off without even paying, but if you get busted, you got to pay. Right, well, I know that now. I'm, I'm, I'm an expert now. Now you're an expert. Well, thanks a lot, Neil. Have a good day. Tote scenes. Dewey. Let's do uh, Miami next. Hello. Hey, Neil. How are you? Good. Hey, listen, I hate to rehash things. Did you ever find out uh, yesterday who Troy Donahue played in The Godfather? Yeah, he was know. Connie's a boyfriend, right, and Connie's a disliked boyfriend. I remember it, she brought him home, and they were like, eh, like that. Right, and Godfather 2, not 3. Right. Right, you know, uh, John Cazale... Fredo, you know, he was dying during uh, the Deer Hunter. Did you ever see that movie? Yes. He was uh, he was on the verge of death, and when they released that movie, he was uh, already pushing up daisies. That'll teach him to uh, snitch on to set up his brother, you know? <laughs> That's it. Well, I just wanted to help you out, man. Thanks for the good news. See ya. See ya. Poor Fredo, he's dead. Poor Fredo. So he was dying during the filming of that movie of Deer Hunter. How do you like that? I thought it was Al Pacino all the time who had that line. I'm dying over here. Attica, Attica, what a movie, huh? Attica. She had an interesting uh, boyfriend, girl, whatever it was. Here's a uh, Pembroke Pines. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, first off, happy, happy birthday. Happy Shavuos. Yeah, and have many more. Enjoy the show. Um, I just wanted to tell you, you know, with this thing with the Haitians and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know, I think uh, it's not right. It is kind of uh, ra racist or or just. You know, not to let them, you know, have a chance at life. I mean, the Cubans did it. Look yeah. how many Cubans came over here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they made a life for themselves. Well, I mean, for the government to set up a separate policy in terms of, you know, keeping them confined while they're here as opposed to anybody from just about any other country in the world who uh, comes here and then they get, you know, they get examined physically to make sure they're not bringing us any new diseases, et cetera, old ones. And then they, you know, they stay with their friends or family or somebody holds uh, onto them for a while until they get their political asylum. We process them and see if they've got a real legitimate reason of being here, and then we send them back where they came from. But with the Haitians, we have this, this administration, the one that's in power right now, all of a sudden decided, well, well, we've got a separate rule for you. We just don't want to talk about it. That's, uh, you know, it's, I guess, a double standard, you might say. And keep in mind, the Cubans have political clout, the Haitians do not. That's what it boils down to. Yeah. Uh, hey, they, uh, they changed the name to the, to the, uh, uh, arena, didn't they? Yeah. I didn't know that. It's now the, uh, yeah, Renta Yenta Center. No, it's, office, uh, office Depot, Depot Office Depot, Depot, Depot uh, pencils and pads in the crap center, yeah. <laughs> have a great yeah, day, pal. All right. And they keep changing the name because all these places keep going out of business, like Enron Field, things like that. That's the way it goes. How about Pro Player Stadium? When are they going to ever rename that thing? Pro, the Pro Player went out of business like a year ago, didn't they? Yeah. They went, they went under. They took a <laughs> crap. How come we're not getting any spy reports from uh, MBM? Wouldn't you think that a lot of our uh, folks listen to MBM? No. No? Maybe one? And was that a, a dark guy that called you to give you that spy report? Because yep. white, white folks do not listen to WMBM or Bishop Curry. Here's uh, Miami. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, I, don't, I thought for sure that was Matt Drudge immediately when I heard his voice. Anyway, I don't know why you think that uh, he's such a buddy of yours. I mean, I've personally heard him at least on a couple of occasions rip you a big one on his show. Really? Especially during the... During, during the what? Uh, during the election debacle. Uh, it... Yeah. Well, now, what's happening with his calls? Did I do that? 
Where is this guy? You made a, re- you made a remark about, uh, you know, in jest about starting a riot because Republicans were rioting in downtown. Yeah. And then you went up the next day for vacation. And on his show, he quoted you as inciting a riot. And then you, then you, uh, in fear for your life, uh, somehow, uh, you decided to go- leave town to get away from the heat of having made that statement. Oh I mean, my was- God. I mean, it was. Uh, he, he's it talking was, about a guy that sat here through Marielle for uh, two years and sat with 80 billion. We had legal pads full of death threats, and he said, "I'm afraid, afraid for my life." I mean, he, he, you know, he implied you had made those inflammatory statements about getting people to riot, and then you split town. But yeah, let, let me let me say this. Here. Let yeah. me say this. I have never heard this man on the air in my life. He came to one of our appearances at the Pizza Loft with Lynn Samuels a couple of years ago. I guess it's more than that, three, four years ago. Uh, pretends to be a real big groupie, my kind of a closet groupie. Yeah. And Lynn, who's a big fan of mine, I email back and forth with her all the time. Who's who's uh, she got? I don't know if you ever looked at her website. It's phenomenal. I mean, oh, she's, I've heard her many times. She's uh, a real liberal and real legitimate yeah. and a good they friend. They do a show together. But the but, but she, she I just say I don't understand that because she came in here a couple of weeks ago just to say hi with Boca Brian and Matt Drudge was in here with her, which I didn't recognize him because I see him once in my life and and laughing and sucking up. So maybe he's got some kind of a uh, you know. But a little bit of kind of a problem, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, listen, he has sometimes does uh, his show uh, for filling in for that uh, nutcase in Orlando, Schmidt. He'll, him and Lynn will do a show together, like, you know, uh, uh, back and forth. Uh, yeah. So I know that they're, you know. He, oh, they're, 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 they're as tight as a drum. I, I, yeah. just, I just, during the last break, I sent her an email because she had sent me one this morning and said, what's up with your buddy? He's uh, going off the deep end. Yeah, so, I mean, he loves you. He's, big, he's been on Phil's show a lot, too. He's a big buddy with Phil out in L.A. Really? So he, are oh, you yeah. sure? He's been on Phil's show. Yeah. And, and, and uh, he has Phil on his website sometimes. Well, he ain't, ain't going to be on this show, I'll guarantee yeah. you that. Well, you know, he makes so much stick to it. You know, it, it, it's, if he's been your big buddy, you should ask him about that. Okay, thanks for the good news. All right. See ya. I never said he was my big buddy because I don't know him. I said he pretends to be a big groupie. And then, of course, that little George, oh, Matt George loves your show. He loves you. You know, all that crap. You know, of course, it's George. You know that, George. George is just, uh, George, just one of those things. 27 past noon at 560 WQAM. Hey, Pompano Park is open for live harness racing three great nights a week, every Wednesday, Friday, like tonight, and Saturday. First post time, 7.15 in the p.m. Free general parking, free clubhouse, and grandstand admission every afternoon and night. And, of course, simulcasting every day from high lie harness and thermo tracks all around the country starting at noon every day of your life. Come on out and enjoy an evening of great harness racing action. Root from, uh, for a winner from the rail. Treat yourself to a private box seat on the fourth floor or enjoy a Ben & Jerry's hot fudge sundae or a slice of Bellotti's pizza. Don't forget every Wednesday at the track is dollar night. You can get you a draft beer, hot dog, soda, large pretzel, or popcorn, only a buck apiece. And on the top of the track, on the sixth floor, it's the great dining room. Chef Kirk Lede's nightly specials are phenomenal, and they got the best seafood steaks and prime member dinners in town. And like Steve writes in here, even I, Neil Rogers, enjoy eating at the top of the park restaurant. It might cost you a little bit more than it cost me. You got your own little private TV monitor. You can watch the local races and races from all over the world. There's also a great all-you-can eat buffet on the fourth floor players' lounge for just ten ninety five per person every night that we have live racing. Every Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Don't forget we got early post time for the first race now, seven fifteen tonight at Pompano Park, Power Line, Road a block south of Atlantic Boulevard, where Steve Wolf is our good paisan. Okay, just relax. No, I had to go un- un- unscrew up the fax machine. It was frozen up. Okay, just calm down. So I get a fax uh, back just now or an email from my friend Lynn Samuels who says that she assures me Matt Drudge is not a race baiter. He would not uh, instigate the thing with Newsmax. Wouldn't do this and do that. So that's who the hell knows. So we got a big mystery. Sounds like a lot of people looking for a lot of publicity to me. Before you head out on your next jihad, make sure you're carrying the Palestinian weapon of choice, the West Bank 44 Magnum Semi-Automatic Rock. The 44 Magnum Rock is specially designed with very sharp edges for maximum damage at very close throwing range. The West Bank 44 Magnum Semi will have your enemies ducking for cover before you even release your throw. Once you feel the weight of the West Bank, you'll never use another rock again. Get yours today while supplies last. The West Bank 44 Magnum, available at the blown-up West Bank building near you. Wow. 12.32 at 5.60. Uh, Carlo, I tell you, you got to admit, this has been a pretty heavy-duty week. This has been amazing. Just gets a call from the Fox people again. Now, did they identify who it was? Yeah, it was Michael Roberts. Uh, Michael Roberts from Fox News from the John Gibson Show. 
inviting me to come on to respond to their disgusting, grotesque, inaccurate piece yesterday. And the answer continues to be no. No, no thank you. What's that going to do for me? See, I don't go on any of those shows. I've been invited on CNN and on this one and that. I don't go. I haven't done them for years. What's the point? Unless you got a big fat ego, and if you, you'll notice that you see the same talking heads on all of these shows all the time, because it's an ego trip. Ego trip. Big pompous blowhards. Ba 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 ba. You know. What, what would be the point? What is the, what is the upside? And the answer is none. I mean, talk about chutzpah. Is that incredible? I was in shock. I mean, I, mean, I, I almost had, if it weren't, if, you know, I just can't believe that it, it's possible. Can I thought you? it was a crank. I I'm almost tongue-tied between running around. I did fix the fax machine, by the way. Nice going, Neil. Thank you. See? I may be an asshole, but I fixed the fax machine. Let's see. It should have added to your list Cuban rafters. These are Cubans supposedly coming on rafts since 1993. Believe me. <laughs> okay. Whatever you say. And this is from a Cuban-American, by the way, who says he's got the inside scoop <laughs> or poop or something like that. So let's see, uh, maybe we got a fake Mad Drudge. You think that's possible? Possible. And then somebody calls to tell you Mad Drudge bought a condo on Miami Beach. Is that, now, what does that have to do with the price of uh, eggshells? I, I, what does that mean? I don't know. We're getting some calls. Man, there. oh, man, it's kind of like the whole thing because it's getting four days till election time. I think some people are like <laughs> coming unglued a little bit, <laughs> if you ask me. Woo! Maybe Matt Drudge holds a grudge. For what, I don't know, but we'll find out. 551 votes. What event in the last 25 years is that? I, I still can't get over the fact that the ass... See, they all think it's shtick. Everything is shtick. Hey, we just ripped you an ass. You want to come on and respond? No. No, thanks. I'm doing a radio show here. I'm not interested in you assholes at Fox News, okay? I'm not interested in goosing up your ratings and getting my audience to tune in and to try to go... You know, and the fact that uh, your buddy there at night's got a zero share in this market. Ain't going to happen. Ain't going to happen. 553 votes. What event in the last 25 years has had the greatest negative impact on South Florida? Liberty City Riots, 19. Ailey on 32. Mo Howard coming to town, 53. He's moving down to Hurricane. Hurricane Andrew, 59. 2,000 hanging chat election, 131. And the Mariel Boatlift, 259. Almost 47%. Say, oi, we went to hell with Mariel. That's what they said. A lot of open lines now. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon line. Here's Miami. Hello. John Bob. Mm-hmm. Good one. Coral Springs. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, sir. For, um, first off, it's a good thing Heather never heard that bit about the names that the black kids give, the pharmacy names that the, bla that the black kids Oh, dumb names. Yeah, I'll, I'll play that in a minute. Yes, they're, they're listening, so I'll play that in a minute. <laughs> um, I want to give you a quick shout at a happy birthday. Thanks. Um, also, Matt Drudge, he reminds me of Howdy Doody, with duty being the operative word. <laughs> And please keep using Mitch Hirsch because the day you retire, radio is officially dead down here. Please keep using Mitch Hirsch? Oh, yes, thanks because, a lot. <laughs> because we don't want you to retire. <laughs> I don't use Mitch Hirsch. I'm not that stupid. I, Have a great day, pal. Take care. Yeah. I'd have to work till I was 110 if I was still with Mitch Hirsch. Nice going, Mitch. Great job, by the way. So let's see. We've got all kind of conspiracy theories about how this whole thing developed. We've got the Mo factor, and then we've got the Bill O'Reilly factor, and then uh, whatever else. And then the Matt Drudge factor, and then there's Max factor who must provide all that pancake makeup for the people at Fascist News Network, that orange pancake. I, listen, maybe some of you people ought to wash some a few layers of that off. You're starting to look really ridiculous. I, I'm still trying to absorb what you told me about the people calling from the John Gibson show. I can't stand John Gibson. I can't stand the Fox News Network. They make me want to duty right in my pants, okay? Hey, by the way, don't forget to join Marks, uh, Marks and Mike's. Mike's Hard Lemonade and Joe Costello, 3 to 5 this afternoon at Publix. Northwest 128th Street and Biscayne Boulevard, North Miami. Stay to win, uh, stop by to win big prizes. Register to win tickets to the big race, the Budweiser race, November 16th. I didn't say that. Somebody else was whispering in the background, whispering by the graveyard. Here's uh, North, uh, what is it? Fort Lauderdale, South Fort Lauderdale, somewhere in between. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Hi, happy birthday, Neil. Speaking. Uh, can you play the Jihad Johnny song for me? I'll think about it. If i got time. Okay, thanks. See ya. Do I have time? We'll see. See if we can lay that in there. Here's Lake Worth. Hello. Lake Worth? Oh, I'm sorry, Neil. Hey. That's okay. Don't be sorry. Listen, I, I, I missed the whole thing. I don't want to bring up anything bad, but what caused the rift with you and Mo Howard David? What's, 
Was there one? Oh, I don't want to have to. I don't want to go back to oh, that business sorry. again. The fact yeah. that the fact is that it's a guy with no sense of humor. You right. know, I, he came to town here, and I do the same with him. I do with everybody else. I take a few pot shots at Hank. We have fun back and forth with Mad Dog with, with everybody. He can't handle it. He's beyond <laughs> that. He's above that. I'm unprofessional, and that son of a bitch, that faggot, blah blah. And so he's really got a bug up his ass. And so you know, he's uh, we got a a one sided war going on on his side. You know. I love when you nail them. It's part of the coolest part of the show. Yeah, and everybody loves it and laughs at it. But the problem is he can't let his hair down. Oh, that was a bad, bad expression. I don't think that's going to happen, right? I beg your pardon. I don't think that's ever going to happen. No, well, he, he lets it down when, when you don't see him. Yeah. Now, <laughs> his pictures on the website or something? Because I never had. Yeah, the uh... QAM website. Go to QAM.com and you'll see that dead animal that died on his head. All right, we love you, Neil. Thanks. God bless you. Yeah, Mo just unfortunately can't loosen up a little bit. In fact, that's what uh, Clarence was complaining about this morning, too, when they were doing all that banging against the wall. And he said, gee, I wish he'd loosen up a little, but he just can't do it. 21 till 1 at 560 WQAM, where everybody's just gone like that. Uh, Heather from Fox News. Hi, Neil. How are you? I'm okay, I think. Good. Thanks for taking our call. We've been trying to reach you for the past couple days. You're trying to reach me? You've called people that haven't been invented yet. you called dead relatives of mine. What's the uh, story, Heather? We're working on a story about uh, the CD you're promoting on your website. That's yeah. called Kiss, a, I won't say it, N-word, Good Morning. Hey, Heather, are you listening to the show? Uh, yes, I am. I've been listening for did, the past couple days. And just so you well, know, wait, we wait are a minute. Did, you, did you hear me go through the entire uh, rationale of what that, that... That song had nothing to do with Condoleezza Rice. Uh-huh. What about the song Condoleezza, Condoleezza? That has, that, well, that's obviously about Condoleezza. Uh-huh. Yes. And I just want to know why you're, why you're playing this on your show. No, I see, I'd like to know why. This is really interesting. Why are you calling me asking me why I should play this? We make, we have song parodies about Bill Clinton, dozens of them. Nobody ever complains of them. Nobody ever complained about those. Well, about there's the... some uh, African American folks up in here in New York who are pretty offended by it. And... But, you know, but wait a minute. Let me say this to you, Karen. We're not in New York. Uh huh. Okay, we don't broadcast in New York. We're on WQM in Miami. Well, and, and the fact of the matter is that unless, except for people like you and the people at uh, that right wing Newsmax.com who want to make a big simmons about this, if it weren't for that they wouldn't even be aware that we exist. Neil, okay. there's some uh, this organization that's uh, offended by it is a national organization. The but but the, talk, fact is, the fact of the matter is we've been playing these songs for many, many, many months. We've never had one single complaint. And when interlopers like you from outside, like from Fox News or from some right-wing website, want to tell us what... I mean, for you to ask me, how come you're playing that? Because we want to play it. Okay, it's, Neil, it, but what, what's the value comedy. in it? What, is it, what, is it, what does it do for you? It's what is called, it for audience? It's called comedy. That's what it's called. you have a sense of humor? Do you think it's funny to call... Uh, to call Condoleezza Rice? In addition, well, Harry Belafonte called her the House Negro, okay, so we'll call her whatever we but, want. But this is a little bit different. I mean, he, no, no, was, it's not he the, was taking it's, issue with the It's some not the policy. least bit different. She is the House Negro. See, you people at Fox may not understand this. Not everybody in the world is a right-winger like Rupert Murdoch. There actually are those of us who are progressive or moderate, liberal, whatever we are, who also have the right to speak to express whatever the hell we want. So, so you, w repeat again what you just said for me there. You think she is a what? She's the House Negro. Uh-huh. And yeah. you don't find anything wrong with that? Well, what, what do you mean wrong with that? It's a fact. That's my opinion. Am I entitled to my opinion? Uh -huh. you're, you're certainly entitled to your opinion. And that's, but, you know, and that's, and that's some folks are wondering why that's you basically, guys, if, That's if you basically could... what Harry Belafonte said as well. And it's obvious. To, this is why nobody returned your calls. Uh, Heather, or whatever your name is, because uh -huh. we knew that you were trying to stir up a bunch of crap and take something out of context. When I asked you, did, I don't think did, there's anything being taken you, out of context. Did you listen? Did you listen? See, we're not, you we're guys not, have been playing. We're not doing the Bill O'Reilly show, okay? Funny. It's my show, and I'm not going to have you scream over me or try to out talk me, okay? It's not going to work. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I asked you in the beginning of the conversation, which I was very calm, and I asked you, did you hear me explain the origin of that song, the restitution song? The fact of the matter is, and I don't know, I'm sure he must have been on your channel, Randall Kennedy, the black author who wrote the book Nigger, The Strange Career of a Troublesome Word. Not that I'm aware of. Well, he was certainly on CNN. He was on MSNBC. Maybe he wasn't on Fox because he wasn't, I, I don't know, maybe you just didn't, weren't aware of it. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got a question for are, are you. Are you aware of that book? You portray yourself to be this sort of liberal voice 
But yet you're. Ma'am, I'm, I don't put I don't put labels on me. I'm, I'm, for example, okay. Like, what do you, what would when you it call comes yourself to, then? When, I call myself a human being. You see, you people on Fox, it's this old liberal and a conservative. That stuff went out with high button shoes. Okay. No, hold on a second. I'm Here's a my thinking, question. living, you and breathing human be, being. In addition, maybe I'll just in call addition it to which, Anna. why do I have to, in Miami, Florida, answer to some assholes in New York on Fox News how I do my show? What is it your business? There are a lot of people who care, and there are people in Miami they who care about this too. Who, who are they? Now, you're calling. Who a, are they? Name me one person in Miami who's concerned about it. Folks we know down there, certainly. And I Na name me one. Two. Look, name me one. It's offensive to name lie about me a woman one. Who name is me one. Of a very Honestly, high I don't care. I don't care what you say. We don't. Her we don't like Condoleezza. Her okay. And have a nice day. Okay. We're calling her whatever we feel like calling her. She's a public goddamn figure. And blow it out your right wing ass. And you and Bill. And by the way, O'Reilly didn't make the numbers. Zero. Congratulations on the big number, Bill. Condoleezza, Condoleezza, Chevron Moody. With your funky yellow teeth so far apart. Condoleezza, Condoleezza, what you be doing? Get the old fascist black that token Schwarzer's dog. Is you dead? Cause you a high-toned boot-lip Negro Is you the blackie and your mammy who be smart? Yes. Does they like how you shine their shoes on the Lisa? Yes. All the way you wash and talk the whitest cars <laughs> Georgie Jr. say he trusts you, Condoleezza. To sell our allies on the greedy oil wall. But then he make you clean all the White House bathrooms. The pub, the sink, the toilet, and then scrub the floor. They tell you don't wear sandals, Condoleezza. Your cold chip toenails make them want a wretched fuse. Your nappy leg hair looks just like it be Velcro. Yes. The GOP want you to be that token spoon. All right. One day while you be flipping pancakes, you may realize that they're treating you just like your Esther Rose. That's when your head will move from side to side, Condoleezza. Here till Bush and Rummy, they be crack your asshole. 1248 at 560 WQM. Don't forget, join Mark's Hard Lemonade, Joe Costello, 3 to 5 this afternoon at Publix. Northwest 128th Street in Biscayne Boulevard, North Miami. Stop by to win our usual low-budget QM prizes and register to win tickets to the big Budweiser race on November 6th. 16th, sorry. So anyway, in case this thing about Matt Drudge is true, let me just go on record right now, and I've been saying it for many days. I'm going to be getting out of here very soon, like in a few days. So uh, if he would suggest that I'm leaving because the heat is on and because he said this and uh, this one, that's the answer to that, okay? It's almost almost enough to make me want to stick around. Almost. But not quite. Here's a fact that says, Dear Mr. Rogers, from Larry, I know you're intelligent and rational is what it says. How do you like that? A fact that says, I know you're intelligent and rational. Yes, I am. You seem knowledgeable when it comes to people's rights. Amendment number six prevents people from smoking in restaurants, clubs, bars, and lounges. I think this is not only unfair but unconstitutional. I happen to agree with you, Larry, even though I don't like smoke. At least not that kind. A restaurant owner should have the right to decide if he wants to allow smoking in his restaurant, even if it's only in a certain section. After all, he's paying the rent, electric taxes, etc. Passing this amendment will hurt a lot of businesses and people will lose jobs. Also, a customer should have the right to decide if he or she wants to enter a place that allows smoking. I think amendment number six should say that all public businesses, including restaurants, bars, and so forth, should be required to post a 12 by 18 inch sign on all entrance doors stating whether smoking is permitted or prohibited in their establishment. This should be the people's choice, not the government's. Thank you for reading this, Larry. P.S. A friend of mine and I had some friends from Europe visit him two weeks ago. Before returning to Europe, one of them made this statement. This is a great country to visit, but I wouldn't want to live here. Too many rules. How do you like that? It says, please read this at 1230. Crossed out 1240 is I'll be at lunch and be able to listen to you. Well, 1250 is close enough. <laughs> and I agree with you, Larry. Too many goddamn restrictions, too many, uh, too much repression. 
You can't do this and you can't do that. Too many laws. Too many fascistic laws. So did Matt Drudge ever call again or what? Not that I know of. See, I, I don't, I, I, I mean, he just isn't that stupid. That no. he would, now I'm talking about the first call. About how many, uh, House Negroes did Bill Clinton have? Because Matt Drudge is just, uh, too politically sophisticated for that. He knows about all the minorities that were in the Clinton administration, regardless of his own politics. Uh, unless he's just, uh, you know, maybe got some bad candy in his bag last night. And, and just looking to stir the pot or maybe smoke some bad. Here's a fact that says, Muriel Boatliff, definitely number one. Thank you, Jimmy Carter. I was living in Gables by the Sea at that time, had my home broken into twice, my office on Brickle once. How about your other two favorites, O.J. and Carroyo, it says. Well, no question, they're two of the most unctuous figures in town, but they aren't happenings. And on four, I guess luckily for us, O.J. is murdering so far on the West Coast. 584 votes. What event in the last 25 years has had the greatest negative impact in South Florida? Marielle Boatlift winning by a landslide, 272. The 2000 hanging Chad election, 136. Hurricane Andrew, 63, and moving up fast right on the ass of Hurricane Andrew. Mo Howard coming to town, 60. Alien only 33, and Liberty City riots only 20. Small potatoes. Eight minutes to one, we got the Mad Dog at one o'clock. Live, Live and local. We are Sports Radio 560 QAM. Hi there, you bastards. Ladies, there's nothing worse than a stinky smell emanating from way down there. Ooh. Believe me, your love tunnel can get that way pretty fast from improper care. So if you want a clean, prim and proper love canal, you need to use Clitorox. It's the industrial strength wedge cleaner. And it comes in a variety of flavors to please him. Mmm, strawberry. My favorite. Hold your horses, big guy. So if you want a clean, fragrant love subway, get Clitorox. Because soap and water just isn't enough. Now where were we? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> 12.56 at 560. WQM, the Mad Dog will be along at 1 o'clock, then Hank at 3. And then uh, what do we got? The Dave Watson Show and Hank Show at 530. And then we got a bunch of stuff you probably won't want to listen to. 600 votes even on there, and 280, 46.6% say the Marielle Boatlift. Oi! Bay. Here's Hollywood. Hello. <laughs> Here's Miami. Hello. Hey, before I get into my Mo Howard, Howard Mo uh, faux pas, um, just for a note for all you secondhand uh, smoke haters like I am. Yeah. If you vote for this ban, just remember this: we're a tourism state that depends on conventions. Right. We'll, we'll see a decreased business in that. We'll never see casinos down here. So just think about that. I mean, I hate it also, but just think about that. Hey, last time I was at um, Joe Robbie, I was going to get my credentials, and I didn't even know who Mo Howard was. I'd never seen him before. Mm -hmm. So the guy in, in, who was asking the um, guy was handing out the credentials was asking for his name. And he says, Howard. And instinctively, I just yell out, Mo. And uh -oh. I know he didn't turn around, but I know he heard me because the guy writing down the name looked at me and started writing the M. So you busted me, Neil. All right. Good job. See you later. Thanks. See you later. Good job. By the way, I just want to say this with all this hysteria that's been whipped up, this artificial hysteria the last two or three days. I got a real pretty good idea where I would place my money as to who was in the background stirring all the crap, stirring the pot i got two names in mind, okay? See, one thing that happens to some people is that when their hanky-panky gets prohibited by law, by legal injunction, they have other ways that they try, like behind the scenes, to start stirring the crap again, okay? Because they're compulsive and have no lives. And that's just, just a theory of mine. Of course, it could be Matt Drudge. Do you think it's Matt Drudge? No. No, we don't. It could be um, Cock Robin. It could be Batman and Robin. Oh, Batman, here you go again. Here's a fact from Jane who says, interesting to see the corporate media come after you. They must be have searched long and hard to find you. I have a stereo in my office, but I have to use the little clock radio positioned in a certain way in order to pick you up. Are you the only radio personality now marching in lockstep with the right wing in this market? Yes, it says. This election is driving me nuts. I hope I don't blow a blood vessel before I get to vote. And then if I get to vote, will my vote be counted? I heard a computer professor saying these machines can seem to work all day, but not, not have any data. <laughs> How do you like that? They work, but there ain't no votes in them. So they just stick a few in, depending on what they want. Yeah, I got those two names in mind. You know, and to me, they're like in uh, marching in lopstep now. L lopstep. Maybe it's time for somebody to pack his toothbrush. Here's Oakland Park. Hello. Yeah, I got to go with Mo Howard on this. I think you guys stepped over the line. You know what I mean? On what? Well, I mean, you know, when he came in, you said there was going to be some joking, but now you got him and Geldy doing it, you know, whacking each other off. I mean, yeah. don't you think that's a little bit too much? No. 
Everybody in the building thinks it's hysterical. You'll pay for your sins, sir. Okay. Oh, that's Reverend Jones again. Well, we got him back. Let's hear it. Oh. Reverend Jones. <laughs> Nice hearing from you. And by the way, nice baseball cap. That's what Dick Feinberg told me at the track the other night. He said, lovely baseball cap. But turn it around the uh, right way, okay? You're too too old to be wearing it backward. That's for punks. Even Carlos is wearing his cap uh, facing forward, okay? If you wear it backward, you either like got to be a punk or some old fart trying to be a punk. And that's embarrassing. Nice hearing from you, Reverend Jones. Here's uh, Vero Beach. Hello. Hey, Neil. First time, long time. All right. All right. I want to talk about your poll. Okay. If you would add Metro Day government in there, I'd vote for all of them, and it'd give me all the reasons in the world to move out of Palm Beach County. Well, I don't understand. I don't get that. Well, all the reasons you asked to vote on, they're all good reasons why, you know, bad events have happened in the twenty you know, yeah. past 25 years. Uh -huh. And if you throw Metro Date in there, it's forming throw, the government. What, throw Metro Date. Is Metro Date an event? Well, forming the Metro Day government. Oh, I, I see there. what you're saying. I got okay. it. Okay. Okay. So you know what I, I'm going to do? I'm going to put this call on there as one of the worst events of the last 26 years, I would say. Wouldn't you agree? I would say that call could have been. At any rate, he meant well, and I know what he's saying now at this point, but it's a little, uh, I think he's pushing like the seeds a little bit too hard, okay? So I'm going to go home, and I'm going to have a wild weekend with Matt Drudge. Bye, bye, bye. The Neil Rogers Show on 560 WQAM, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Oh, God.